Hello, everyone. Welcome to Telling Tales. Welcome to Wednesday Night Simba Room. It's what we do on Wednesdays. It's what we've done on Wednesdays for at least 20 years now. Um, so we're very glad to have you with us on this, the 7,000th episode of The Witch Hammer. No, I am exaggerating, of course, but uh, it sure does feel like that sometimes. Before we start bringing on uh, my lovely players, uh, who despite all this time we've we've spend doing this i'm still not sick of um let's do some lovely promo if you check down below this video you'll find a number of links there's links to twitch and links to youtube if you're watching this on one of those sites i i damn well hope you are um and if you want to catch us live that's twitch and if you want to catch us in video on demand format that's YouTube. There's also links to our Patreon, to our Discord, to our social media, if those are the kind of things that uh, interest you. We are currently running several campaigns, uh, weekly campaigns, here on Telling Tales. Mondays is Monday Night Vason. Wednesdays is Wednesday Night Simbroom. Thursdays is confusingly two different things. Um, we're, we haven't actually quite started alternating between them, but very soon we will be. Um, we are playing Wicked Ones, which is uh, relatively new. We've had two episodes of it so far. Um, and then we'll be picking up The Big Wet, uh, which is Pierre's apocalyptic survival thing uh, towards the end of this month. And then we're just doing a kind of alternating thing. Uh, we also run one-shots on a monthly basis. Not that you'd know it over the last couple of months, but um, that's the idea. We don't have any in the calendar at the moment. We have uh, one put on the, the kind of temporary back burner, which is Johnny's uh, Space Zulu thing. And I'm going to do something probably over the next month or so, uh, but they're not in yet due to an overabundance of not planning them. Um, so there we go. Uh, but keep an eye out for that. I'm sure something will end up in the calendar soon. Okay. Let's start talking uh, recap. Let's start talking Simbroom, Witchhammer stuff. Uh, and our first player on this week is going to deliver us uh, a kind of potted history of the Witchhammer so far. Uh, it's Sam. Is this guy? This Hello. guy. This guy here. <laughs> um, Sam plays Askarai, Changeling Scout and Ranger and DPS Machine via that lovely uh, that lovely bow of his. Um, Sam. Tell us everything everyone could ever need to know about Witch Hammer. <laughs> I have to say, I'm a little bit thrown off by the fact that we're in episode 7,000. I might be missing like a few thousand episodes from the recap, but I'll do my best. Um, it's it's <laughs> 2031, Sam. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're basically in the forest of Davakar. We came in here on a little side quest looking for elven ruins. When we got here, we ended up following the path of a, uh, a treasure hunter named Almendra, who um, supposedly has found the way to the lost city of Simba, where there's probably loads of treasure and also loads of cursed stuff, and is generally like the El Dorado of, of Davakar, more or less. Um, so we have set about, via a few contacts that we had at the time and hunting people down, going to three locations or talking to a person and going to two locations that we know Almendra went to or talked to to try and figure for ourselves where Almendra is and as a byproduct, maybe as the primary product, uh, where Simba is. Um, so we've been to New Earth more, where we kind of put down a bit of a, a war band and also took out one of the rival groups who are looking for this information. Um, we found a, a kind of the the way to get this knowledge. Then we went to uh, a kind of ruined a ruined place called Faramaroon, where we found out the the mechanism for for getting access to this knowledge after a lot of fighting, um, encounters with elves, encounters with Queen's Rangers, all kinds of stuff. Um, and now we've. After a couple boat journeys, where we've gone to a place called Yefron Isle, where we're hoping to find out how to get underneath Kavosti, the kind of barbarian capital, where we think this information is. Um, and that's sort of where we're at. Yefron Isle is horribly cursed, loads of wraiths there. Um, and then as a backdrop to all this, there's a bunch of other kind of treasure hunting groups and, you know, people sent from the church, people sent from the armies and the and the all kinds of different groups searching for the same information. Some of them we've 
fought. Some of them we've seen die. I think at least one group has apparently met their end on Yefron Isle. Um, and then at the same time, there's like a war brewing in Davakar. Um, and also the church is, there's a huge fissure in the church. So there's just a lot going on, basically. That That's an excellent summary, although my, my brain immediately supply when you said there's a huge fissure in the church i was like like a massive guy with a fishing rod <laughs> like, i wouldn't i wouldn't church. even be surprised at this point maybe there is yeah. maybe prios has been replaced by a huge straight up uh, uh, uh like souls like boss um somewhere <laughs> you fisher. Know. yeah but there we go the, will the fish fisher king would that be i don't know um anyway uh there we have it um let's bring on the other players and i'll do a little recap of exactly what happened last session and then we'll get on with it um and our next player tonight is good old chris uh who plays gooder older steo uh former town guard and infantryman turned um adventurer but not really for profit uh at this point um chris What's what's running through Steo's mind as all the the puzzle pieces are falling into place for the path beneath Carvosti? I mean, two things are are principal in Steo's mind. One is getting off this island, this cursed island that is gradually eating the party alive um, as quickly as possible. But the second thing is, so far we are one for three in sabotaging these sites as we leave them to make sure that no one else can find this route to this cursed city and thus protecting a great deal of people from a very squiggly fate so steve was aware that um th this one did not go well and wishes he could find a way to cause more damage <laughs> sure absolutely um and uh, in that, you're, let, let's move on to uh, the next player who's probably your closest ally in the party in terms of these things. It's John, um, and it's Sir uh, Aaron Dar, uh, the last remaining uh, member of House Dar, uh, sort of wannabe nobleman again, duelist, and um, owner of a very nice cat. Um, yeah, hi, John. Uh, what's Aaron Dar's take on the, the, the whole situation? I I don't know. I think Aaron isn't completely sure what's going on and what's going to happen and who he should trust. Uh, I think he's very much sort of looking to Dio to sort of tell him what to do because, you know, Steo's a, a former infantryman and a man of the Queen but also a sympathizer of the elves, and he seems to sort of know what's going on a lot more than Aaron does. Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, we'll we'll find that out. And notably, you know, he's one of these characters where it's like he's been in all these awful situations before, so he must know what to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's no quantum hell aspect of that at all. It isn't that he keeps finding himself in terrible situations. Maybe we shouldn't follow what he does. Um and finally, for our group uh, tonight, it's Stephen. Stephen playing Elindra, former Templar novice turned uh, adventurer, and kind of the the opposite of uh, Steo and Aaron in the party. Definitely the most bombastic and perhaps given to violence um, out of the group. I think it's fair to say. Um, yeah, she she has a hammer, well, a sword, and everything looks like a nail. Well, a, a thing to decapitate. Yeah, that's about right. What's um what's Alindra feeling on on the topic of Carvosti and it's <clears> kind of holding <throat> into view again? Um, I, I think she's she's trying to stay as focused as she can on 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 the, that path ahead because everything either side of that path in the wider forest is kind of too scary to contemplate right now. Like if they could just get underground into another tunnel maybe that's better than being anywhere else um yeah <laughs> anywhere so, yeah. better than where you are right now specifically i think yeah like the, yes get off the island and get into some other cursed underground tunnel which might yeah. be better than 
the cursed underground tunnels we've been in recently. The grass is always greener in the other cursed underground tunnel, isn't it? So. Exactly that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so in terms of exactly where we are, then, we are beneath the cursed isle of Yepheron, um, dead and empty these past few hundred years, occupied only um, by shadowy wraiths and uh, an undead legion of troops. Uh, you found your way to the sort of, the, not exactly the center of the isle, but the center of certainly why you were there. Um, you found yourself in uh, the cave uh, of Manaud, the uh, toad-like god creature uh, worshipped by the inhabitants of the isle in ages past. Um, you fought your way past uh, his ice guardian, sort of corrupted ice statues uh, swarming with some kind of wraithly possession, um, and on towards the toad creature itself, asleep, fortunately, um, but bearing on the surface of its skin the faces of those of its worshippers it had absorbed hundreds of years ago, um, which was, you know, all quite grim and horrible. Um, you communicated with the former high priest of Yepheron, who uh, you managed to sort of, not exactly dupe, but certainly the, the high priest could think of no reason you'd want to go to Carvosti other than to destroy the inhabitants of it thoroughly, having doomed him and his people to this horrible fate centuries ago. Um, and you essentially kind of gave him the impression that was what you were going to do, and in return he implanted... Um, a map of the tunnels of Carvosti into your heads briefly, uh, which included, or seemed to include, the way to get into them, which is specifically what you were after. Um, and we had a, a sort of fun bit where I essentially showed an image on the screen and said, now copy those bit, copy it for 30 seconds. Um, and I think everyone managed to, at the very least, go, that looks like how you get in. And like took note of that bit specifically, as well as some other bits and pieces, which may or may not prove useful later on. Um, and I think that's more or less where we ended. We had a big discussion where we were like, do we plunge our weapons into the face of this um, toad-dwelling high priest in order to prevent anyone coming after us finding their way into Carvosti, with the maybe con that that seems like it will wake this ancient, awful toad god who will then devour us horribly for all eternity um and i think we roughly reached the decision best not um reluctantly probably not. That, that's fair isn't it yeah you you kind of wanted to but we're like discretion the better part of valor on on fighting a god probably yeah we've we have been trying to sort of scuff over our tracks for anybody coming after us but yeah, the options here appear to be fight Toad God or find way to bring down entire Ziggurat. And I think yeah. both of those are a bit impractical. They, especially with the clock ticking on Yepron as you gain temporary corruption for every every moment you are on there. Um, so with, with that all in mind, I will, because we've had a conversation that's been built, we've been building towards a little bit for the last couple of sessions, uh, so I just want to throw out a little bit of a quick trigger warning for people. There's likely to be a discussion on harming young animals uh, in this. Doesn't mean that will happen, or, or even happen, or happen on screen if it does happen. But there's likely to be a conversation about it. If that's something you're not too fond of or sensitive about, that's maybe maybe it'll be obvious when it's happening. Maybe skip forward a few minutes from that and we'll you know, things will be better. Um, Just watch for when John's face and my face go absolutely sheet white and then skip about yeah. five minutes further on from that and then we'll be back to normal. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, uh, we I, I don't. I believe we just had literally kind of walked away from an oud. Um, we I, I had pretty much settled on we're not going to stab the, the sleeping toad god. Um, with that in mind, I I would assume as GM that you are heading back through that crack in the earth as fast, cautiously but speedily to get off this island as quickly as possible. Am I am I about right there? Yeah. Can Hasker would just like to take just a second, just thirty seconds, to check if there are other footprints in this room that seem recent-ish. Uh, that seem recentish. Uh, yeah, sure. Give me a give me a vigilant roll. It's quite dim in here, so take a take a minus two to it. Okay. 
That is a 14, which just makes it because my vision is 16. Um, there are a number of footprints around the Ice Guardians, which probably isn't a surprise, being as there's also the bodies of two Black Cloaks um, by the Ice Guardians. Um, there is a single set of footprints leading from that apparent conflict to Manaud and then back. Okay. I think I'd forgotten about the Black Cloak being dead there, but okay. Fair enough. Seems like only one, probably only the Black Cloaks have successfully gotten this information and left. Is from the footprints at the very least. From the footprints alone, that would it would seem to be a good, a decent guess. Okay. Cool. Um, g- give me a cunning roll as well, because you're the one thinking about this. Okay. The cunning is, uh, I think, 10. Yes. That's a 20. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I mean, Sam, y- you or other players may have already made some kind of link, but I just wanted to put it out there in case, you know, if you if you clocked it in case you haven't. But tough. So I'm also going to put the brakes on us leaving any further. And um, once just kind of when we're moving in the ante room, like, okay, just give me, give me five minutes. Can you? I'm going to leave a message here because we can't destroy, we can't kill a god, and we can't bring the the roof down. So the best we can do is a bit of propaganda. Um, I'm going to spell, grab some of that rubble. I'm going to spell spell a message out on the floor. Um, so he's uh, Steel will will muster as many people as will help him to spell out and kind of not not insignificant letters, but not like twenty foot high. Um, the face lies. Trust the frog. Oh, oh, Chris, I, I don't think you can get enough rubble to spell. I thought you were going to be like, beware or leave or something. You, there's <laughs> definitely not enough rubble to do that with. It well, maybe just lies then. You, I mean, surely you've got some charcoal or something. You could just draw it on the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, bit of extra time, you say. What does then have everyone take an extra point of temporary corruption, please? I knew you were going to say that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Great. You were getting near the point anyway. How's everyone doing? What are we at now? Absolutely fine. What are we at now? It's a good question. I'm at four out of five. I mean, everyone okay. should be at the same amount. That's why I thought we were out. I just wanted to check out missed or added one. I'm at four out of six. Yeah, four out of six for both Alindra and Revelia. Does corruption have to go over your threshold or meet your threshold? Yeah, it's it's the same as um, right. in the core book originally. It's the same as the pain threshold, and it has to match it. But in the errata, for anyone out there who may not have read the errata, it's like you're doing it wrong. We're not read the errata. Um, all thresholds were changed to be to you have to go over the number, not to match. Okay. The number. So, so Malamai has so just hit his threshold, so he's fine. He's but not fine for long. now, but he probably doesn't want to stay on the island for too much longer. Have Steve's we kind of out of four? Uh, just out of interest, it's not really important. Have we kind of like how much time do we think each of those ticks is taking? I mean, we haven't been here more than a day, so I'm guessing like a few hours per per tick is. Yeah, my. My guess is that we've been here four or five hours. That's a very good guess. <clears throat> four, perhaps. Yeah. For reference, it's a tick an hour. Yeah. <clears throat> right. That's yeah. Yeah. the problem is that means we have like four hours back. No, or not well, maybe no, three no, hours back. No. No, 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 not if you rushed. No, definitely. Yeah, not. I think you've fought around, you've fought and you've argued and you've done all sorts of stuff. No. Yeah, 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 but we we've got a few we've got, you know, 2 hours back, I reckon of no, travel. No, no, De- definitely not. The, the island is not that big. I think you can make it back to the shore where you arrived in an hour if you hustle. Okay, that's definitely hustle. <laughs> we we spent we wasted a lot of time here in the Zagarat Zagarat walking back and forth. We spent a lot of time arguing about what to do at the river crossing 
We spent mm-hmm. a lot of time investigating in the town. So we had like several fights. Yeah, like, yeah. bear in mind we have like six hours of uh, bear cub argument to come. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. We're probably all just dead um, at this. But... Yeah. Um, well, let's say that you have the discussion that has to be had. Uh, probably, uh, it, Chris, you've so you've let you've chalked your message into the the, the floor or the walls. Which which one? The walls. Yeah. Onto the walls. Uh, oh, my mic volume is all over the place. Apparently, are other people having that issue as well? It did oh, briefly, but it seems to be back now. Oh, was it just me moving forward? Was it just that? Yeah, maybe no, it just I got real loud and then quiet. It's something weird, but it's, it's okay. okay. It's I think it's you were quiet for a while, so StreamYard turned your volume up, and then you were talking. It's still, so. still math. I do apologize. Um, so, uh, yeah, you head out of the antechamber um, through the, the doorway with the kind of ruined uh, panel next to it. And then through the, we had just through the crack back down towards the the Garu, uh, Garu den. Um, speaking of which, it feels like that conversation has to happen now. Trigger warning for anyone who doesn't want to hear this. Probably check back in yeah, five minutes or so. We should be fine. Um, a, so, was there some talk previously about doing something to this door? I don't know if there was. I kind of remember it, but I don't know if we gave up on it or or decided on it or against it, like. I, mean, I think it's, we'd a, it's a massive granite before. door. Like, mm. uh, I, I can't imagine anything you could do to it without further I... explosives. Did we've we already do something. Did we already like change the keys on it or something you did. like that? You did. Okay. Okay. You did. Okay. Good. I'm assuming you're pushing it closed behind you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If that's a thing we can do for sure. I think I think you can do that if you heave and, and put your uh, your backs to it, and while you're doing that. We have a conversation that needs to happen. Let's have the conversation. So the options, as laid out previously, you have uh, a number of Garu cubs. Um, I can't remember what the time I had. Like three, six, six. Okay, six. Six Garu cubs are effectively effectively Garu got like massive polar bears, like polar bear plus, right? So they're they're that. They're not that old, though, so I think I've said they're about the size of, like, an, a medium-sized dog, right? That comparable in weight and, and mass. Um, they seem feisty, um, but at the same time, you're all competent. You know, you could definitely handle them in some form or another. You might get bitten or clawed. Um, but the question is, we have three uh, three things here. We had a proposal to because their parents are gone, they probably can't feed themselves, to basically euthanize them and then either take their pelts, because they seem like they're probably quite you know, pricey worthwhile um, or don't spend the time doing that, because it would be quite a amount of time doing that and and leave them behind or there's the option to just kind of leave them I guess, or there was an option post- uh, put forward by someone, there is a barbarian clan whose uh, territory is very nearby, the Biaga, who you've encountered a couple of times already. Um, they have a thing about bears, and they raise bears, and they use bears as kind of like combat animals, slash pets, slash, um, you know, occasionally kind of like, uh, almost like mules, like to carry things. Um, and it's possible that if you either take the cubs with you, or simply tell the Biaga where they are, maybe the Biaga would be interested in coming and, and raising them. And therefore, you wouldn't have to just kill these animals for, for you know, you'll mercy kill them, essentially. Um, that was the discussion. <laughs> where have we come to with it? And what are we discussing as we're going back? Because you're going to have to pass them by. I'm not good with dog types so by medium dog do we mean like a corgi or like a small collie small collie okay a corgi is a small dog so, yeah see i'm never sure whether like chihuahua is small and corgi is less small but both I, are I don't small know. one is okay. tiny and one is small I like a labrador tiny and uh, yeah like, like a smaller size. a smaller labrador would be a yeah 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 it's the kind of dog that an average person can pick up with two and hold with two arms. And right. a strong person can hold them under probably under one arm. Assuming that, that the dog is not too bitey, which... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, 
how do you want to do this? Do we want to just like state where the where each of the characters are coming from with this? I think that's a good starting point because okay. then if, if we do that and three of you are on one page, then maybe we don't even need to have the discussion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or at least can abstract it to a certain degree. Um, so do we, do we want to simply like so let let's go around and say where we are? Sam, where, where's Askari thinking on this? I think Askarai is strongly against leaving them for the Biaga because we don't know if the Biaga even want them, and we also don't know if the Biaga will come to Yefra and Al to get them. And so that seems like there's a good chance we're just leaving them for Stav, which Askarai doesn't want to do. He Askarai would like to, if possible, take them with us, but if we try and pick them up or move them and they seem too aggressive like we can't carry these for an hour while they're like biting and scratching us like that's just not feasible and like we have to get them into the canoes and that kind of stuff like if they're really feisty and fighting us then i think asra is in favor of just mercy killing if we can get them into the canoes and they're not like really violent and aggressive towards us then he's in favor of doing that with as many as we can carry with us okay how about steel Leave them. We don't have time. Elindra. Um, much the same as Askari. I think it's like a red line. For, she's not going to leave them here. That's like they will starve and that's horrific. Um, and the idea that the Bayaga might come is not enough to convince her. So, yeah, her first instinct will just be to kill them and perhaps skin them. If someone suggests taking them to the Bayaga, she'll be much like Askari. Like, willing to give it a try um but not willing to stick with it if they're really gonna fight us over it absolutely and arendar uh arendar is obviously uh slightly foolishly sure that you know i'm sure we can convince them we mean the best and somewhat tame them um but he's in favor of taking them to Bayaga. Uh, if Anton would be willing to do translation services, then Aaron would be willing to go to the Bayaga to convince them to come here. Uh, otherwise, a uh, more reasonable or easier solution, rather than carrying six fighting Garou cubs across the island, might be to walk to the Zarek and convincing them to pull into the inlet to bring the right canoes the around and then you can take them and sure it sounds like the prevailing opinion here is at least give it a, a college try uh, of getting them out by the canoes okay do we want to have any dis in character discussion beyond that we have already had this discussion in character a couple of sessions ago which is why i wanted to slightly railroad this um is there any further discussion we want to have in character about this or are we roughly happy that We'll get to the Garrett Cubs and see what we can do. Yeah, I've, I've asked for that. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, no, Stephen. I was just going to say, it sounds like Steo is not in full agreement, but Steo is also in the yeah, minority here. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously, Ravili is probably going to go for whatever Elindra suggests. Um, Malamai has just, uh, Malamai just kind of shrugs and expresses the opinion that like yeah i mean give it a go he, he seems pretty skeptical that some wild animals can be corralled and, and taken anywhere and you know he's he, he seems to have grown up on a on a farm um and someone who grows up on a farm is not going to have any compunction about um euthanizing animals um so yeah uh degesto d doesn't seem to particularly care um so there we go um Okay, you you hear the cubs before you before you reach them again. They are they are letting out um, sort of quite high pitched whines. Clearly, um, trying to to call out for their parents who who are lying dead um, in front of the the cave where they dwell. Um, you can smell like the the strong iron smell of the Garug blood um, coming from outside the cracks. You kind of round the corner and see kind of blink in that natural, even the, even that kind of like tame hazy light of Yefer on Isle. It's uh, bright in your eyes as you, you step out and see, um, sort of the, the stony shore 
dropping away to the the calm waters of Volgoma. Um, the Garu Cubs are where you left. Well, let's say that one or two of them have actually kind of climbed out of the kind of um, almost like uh, nest of of kelp where they were and are kind of tumbling around on the floor. Um, yeah. Um, what's wh- what are we going to do about this? What's what's going to happen? So I, th- I think Elindra's gonna see if she can find one that's that's kind of on its own. Um, she has a fishing net, so I think she's thinking throw that over mm-hmm. to try to incapacitate it somewhat, and perhaps see if it's possible to get um, some rope um, and maybe muzzle them, Bun- bundle it a bit. Sort of. Yeah, not not even necessarily bundle it up in the net. I mean, maybe bundle it up in the net, but like just see if she can use it to at least try and muzzle these things and and perhaps kind of restrain them in some way. Sure, you you, you they're definitely of a size where you think if you and like they're not as flexible as a dog, right? They're more um, stocky. So you definitely think if you bundled them and held it tight, it it probably wouldn't be able to get to you. Um. So, yeah, tangling it in a net seems a good start to that process. Um, why don't you give me a accurate roll? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, this is not going to go well. Uh, Alindra has an accurate five. Wow, and I rolled a four. Cool. Okay. There we go. Um, you've you've got the net kind of around this Garug. Um, yeah. Uh you got it there. It's kind of tangled up. It they're not. They're certainly capable of like running around a bit and tumbling around, but it's young enough that it's pretty bad at trying to get itself out of this net. Like it, it's just rolling around on the ground, making a kind of uh, almost a cat-like mewling noise. Um, and uh, you could probably have a go at picking it up. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, you, you definitely have enough strength to pick it up, but what I want you to do is roll against its strength to see how well you can kind of like just you know, it, keep yeah. it like stop wriggling, basically, sort of thing. Because it is a wild animal, but it is also a very young wild animal. And I think yeah. there's a certain amount of, you know, not obedience, but like dominance that you can exert, right? Uh, to make it maybe stop trying to fight. Stop fighting. Sure. Um, so let me just, I don't know, let me see how strong the adult Garugs are and kind of very roughly extrapolate from that. Um, Scale okay. down a lot. <laughs> On that plus two, please. Sorry, what's that strength roll? Yeah, strong at plus two. Cool. So I need a 17. Oh, I guess I'm weird again. Yeah, you went Has silent it? and then you went mm. very loud and then you went... I don't know. Yeah. It sounds like let a connection me, um, is loose or something. Yeah, let me... Um, I'll just restart my mic one second. This might go a bit weird, but you carry on talking. Cool. Yes, so I needed a 17 and a lot of 13, so that is a pass on the strength roll. Nice. Uh, that might be a different mic I'm on now. It is a different mic I'm on now, but let me uh, switch it back. <clears throat> okay. That's Sounds good. Fun. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, yep. we'll see if it happens again. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, you you know what? You've got this thing, as as you would not struggle with a very large puppy, it's much larger than a very large puppy, but still, you know, it's a young animal, as I say. It kind of, it's still sort of shifting about a bit. It does obviously doesn't like what you're doing to it, but it's not wriggling actively to try and get away. Um, and after the first few seconds, it stopped trying to like gnaw at you when he realized it just couldn't. And he's now sort of slightly adjusting to try and maybe weasel its way out, but realistically it can't. You're too strong. It, it, it can't do that. Um, can I have Revelia try a similar trick with a cloak? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, what is everyone else doing while this is happening? Is, is like, is everyone in here? Um, are, are some people going outside? What, what's, you know, what is everyone else doing while this is happening? Let's go around the group. Uh, Arindar. 
Uh, I am in the room and I am trying to either tame or distract from what Alinda and Revelia are doing um, by sharing some, like throwing some rations around and okay. sure. either winning them over or just make it so that they don't they see don't Revelia focus on from them. people trying to bundle them up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Steo, how about you? I suppose I'll be helping with the practicalities of, of corralling and bundling, so maybe doing some rope work. But not. I'm not going to be capturing one, I'm just going to be assisting. Sure. Ask her, I think I shall be taking a similar attack to Aaron, like maybe maybe trying to pick one that seems the seems friendly, relatively friendly, trying to give it some food and then just like pick it up and see if it bites his face off. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Um, so uh, one of them is is, is bundled, as I say. Um, go ahead with with Revelia, and you know now that people have the hang of this. Why don't you? I'll, I'll give a plus one to stuff, right? So have Re Revelia roll accurate at plus one, um, and then strong at strong at minus two. At minus two. Uh, sorry, plus two. Cool. Uh, yes, um, Revelia comfortably passes both of those rolls. Okay, so that's another yeah Garug cub bundled up. Uh, who else was ready with with some? Uh, Aaron Dar is kind of trying to distract them. And you know what? Why don't you give me a persuasive roll to see how you're uh, how you're doing with that? Pass. You take a plus two for the food. Okay, there we go. Definitely pass. Uh, all right, um, Steo Askari, You said you weren't particularly bundling them, but you could. Um... What's he, what are you doing? I think Asgard is trying to pick a friendly one and try and convince it with food that I mean it no harm and just have it, like, just be able to pick it up without it, like, being super... Right, you're, tr you're trying to proper charm the thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, you know, the young thing. Well, you've, you've got some pl you've got some food uh, and I said that was, I roughly said that was a plus two. Um, so let's see... Well, the resolute is is not that high. Um, so you know what? Why don't you give me a persuasive roll at uh, plus three? Okay, I think my persuasion is very bad. Let me check. It's very very bad. But still, plus two. I need a seven or I rolled a ten. No, like it'll happily eat food from you, but it it won't let itself. It definitely it kind of like snaps at you as you try and heft it up without some kind of you know thing to hold it in. Okay, in that case, I think I'll start. I don't have a fishing net, but I guess I'll take my cloak off and try and get get the the one that I've vaguely become friendly ish with and try and get it in my sure. fancy cloak. Um, who was the person who suggested bringing the that maybe you could get the Zarex to come here? Okay, Aaron Dar, can you give me a cunning roll, please? At uh, you already had the idea, so let's call it a plus three. Seven under ten, so that's a pass. The Zarek canoes had fishing nets in, and they were all wearing cloaks. The Zarex would probably be able to help us corral them. They, they were fishers, right? Just because you're running out of <laughs> things to hold things. them in. Yeah, but do we think they would they come here? Is my worry. Like they seemed nervous about even approaching the island. How accessible is the like? They dropped landing? you on the shore. Oh, How it looks accessible? very it looks very accessible. It's okay. a slow slope into the water. Okay, it's not like in the middle of a, like there's not like a lot of white water. You can't see, around, a, you like... can't see a reef. You can't see. A, I mean, maybe you don't know, but it, yeah. it looks like a good landing to you. Who's fast? Why don't we have one or two of us run back to the western shore and see if they can bring the fleet round? While some of who's us got the highest quick. Uh, probably me, Askari, Bravilia. Uh, Revelio and Alindra both have a quick of 13. As do I. Malamai has a quick of 15. 
Better than mine. Way better. Why don't and we that's send... the kind of thing I expect he would absolutely <laughs> volunteer for. Yeah. I think if, if Malamai looks keen and Aaron, we're, we're holding these things. Yeah. Why don't Malamai you... kind of nods enthusiastically? I'll, I'll do it. When you run back to the boats, bring them round. We'll wait here for an hour. And then follow you if if the boats don't seem like they're coming. Um, At this point, do we have any sense that Malamai is more afflicted by this corruption than we? He are, seems he seems a bit edgy, but you all do. Okay. How fast is Father Anton? What's what's not Anton's quick fifteen? Not, <laughs> <laughs> not, not quick. I think it's seven. Wait, let me double check. Oh my god! His quick is seven. Okay, no, I, I was worried about being able to. There was a Zarek there who spoke Ambrian, wasn't there? Rough That's Ambrian. Pardon me, adding. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm confident. I'm confident we can do this. Okay. So you and Malamai heading out through the crack onto the shore. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, Would anyone like to know uh, Malamai's persuasive? I'm guessing it's not good from your expression. <laughs> um, okay. Can I have a vigilant roll at plus one from Malamai and Arindar, please? Okay. That is definitely a fail, the 13 over six. Also a fail, also a 13. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, I will... Uh, I will... We'll have a bit of random... Like, who do you think is exiting... The, the cave first, John. He is he faster, so probably Malamai. I mean, you're not both racing from a standing point. Like, no, do, you think, do you think that Aaron would be leading? There's no need to go in depth on this. It's just I need a quick answer to the question. Um, Me. Let's go with me. Okay. Um, right. In that case, please, could you roll your defense at minus seven? <laughs> Yes, and I don't have my parrying dagger out, so that is a lower defense than usual. Target of six. Roll to 13. Uh, okay, could you roll your armor, please? Yes. That's nine. That's pretty good. Um, okay, could you please uh, roll another at minus seven? That's fail. Uh, and an armor roll, please. That's six. Okay. Um, as you exit the cave, uh, the first thing you register that something is wrong is a uh, very like a shadow falling over from you, you from your right hand side and then you feel at first you just feel like you've been punched extremely hard in the side in the ribs and then you feel a sharpness to it and a uh, flow of warmth down your side that tells you you are bleeding and bleeding quite badly um Another blow comes around and strikes you across your face, and you can feel that it kind of glances across, and you can feel a cut, quite a light one across your nose, uh, and it just about registers with you from your days dueling in the back streets of Indoros. Someone has just struck you extremely hard with a pair of punch daggers. Um, you kind of are, are almost knocked aside to this and kind of stagger over. Um, and turn around to see a towering individual standing over you, glaring down at you, blinking almost obsessively in the dull light of Yefferon, uh, with a sickening smile on his face, is the ogre Cleaver. 
springing up from the shore uh, around him from various behind various boulders and rocks over the top of the, like the the promontory of the crack uh, are a number of treasure hunters i don't think you're in any, any immediate state to kind of like catch them <laughs> there's a lot there are more of them than your party for sure um could you take please what was your sorry what was your first armor roll nine nine uh could you take four toughness please cumulatively yes. over the two strikes um okay and also let's have um let's have malamai take a strike from one of cleaver's uh treasure hunters um chris can you roll malamai's defense at a minus one please easily passed Okay. Uh, yeah, Malamai kind of sees you like step out and then like get knocked uh, kind of aside. Uh, and as he like steps forward to see what the hell's happened, uh, a treasure hunter comes at him, a uh, uh, goblin armed with a spiked club. But Malamai kind of like leaps back and desperately tries to draw his weapon as uh, the general cry goes up and the treasure hunters swarm towards you all. Uh, can we have initiative up, please? Yeah. I... Um, what so, is uh, the treasure hunters are at? Uh, what's the first one? Quick, uh, quick ten and vigilant thirteen. What's that? And cleaver is at quick thirteen and vigilant ten. So the inverse. Not having fun, Matt. Um, we normally do. Um, what do we normally do when they're tied with a they're tied with a player character? Do we always put a player character behind first. Player yes. character first? Cool. Uh, in that case, Askrai is at the top. I think it should go player character, enemies, allies. That's a balance to me. Then I will put Cleaver after Alindra, but ahead of Farron. Okay. I'll get that up in a moment. Yeah. Askrai goes first. Need to go first. I. It's obviously safe to say you do not have a shot from where you are. <laughs> or probably don't even know what's happening. Yeah. Do we have any clue that you've, this is going on? You've heard a hue and cry erupt from outside. Clearly more individuals out there than just... Um, Arindar and Malamai um, you've heard a lot of people shout you've heard like uh, a sort of sudden grunt of pain that's probably it like I, I don't think you've you know any more than that at this stage it's a movement to get to the, the cave mouth to see what's going on okay Ashray is going to run over and see what is happening if he hears uh, a commotion okay uh, outside, you can see that uh, Arandar is struggling. It's like enge engaged in combat uh, with the, the huge ogre cleaver that you encountered uh, on the path to the Sun Temple. Uh, and there are a number of individuals. And you know what? You've got... You can at least... You can have a greater sense of being able to see them than um, than anyone else so far. So why don't you give me a vigilant role for a head count on these treasure hunters that you can see. Need a 16 on that. That's a four, so it makes it. Okay. Um, I'd say Askarai, you are aware you may not be able to see them all, but you can see nine treasure hunters. Okay. At and, least nine, maybe more. At least nine, maybe more. And then there's Cleaver. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, Malamai is also engaged with, um, like, basically it looks like Cleaver and this this goblin were waiting on either side of the crack and pounced when they came out. The others are scattered around a bit and are now kind of like picking up their weapons and running towards the cave mouth. To, is, uh, have you used one movement to get to within sight of this? Correct, that... correct. So you still, yes, you still have a shot. Um, is is Cleaver big I mean, enough that I can shoot you, at him? 
are nuts. You do if you do if you think that you already had your bow out. I mean, I probably didn't didn't have my bow out, so I guess I'll spend my action getting my bow out. Do you, do you not have quick draw though? No, I don't have quick draw. Uh, oh, I thought someone did. Yeah, if I need if I need my movement to move and see, I'll spend my action to get my bow out. Yeah, uh, prepare. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, okay, uh, Malamai is, you know, is going to get. I mean, Chris, you play him. But I'm assuming he's going to get his weapon out and try and hit this goblin. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Malamai does have quick draw, but given he's not going anywhere because he's engaged, doesn't necessarily need to use it. So he's just going to get straight involved. I think now is an appropriate time to have a go at axe artist. Um, sure. So I'm going to strike with the axe. And so isn't that then thing I make... where he like he he hits, and if it hits, it does like a sort of stunning thing, and then he gets a free, another free attack, right? Is that yeah, that's works? the that's the long and short of it. So it's a normal attack to start with to see if any of this actually procs. Okay, so well their defense is flat. So both Cleaver and the Treasure Hunters have a flat defense, so you don't need to ask me about um, what the modifier. And I'm rolling are. accurate for an axe attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. It should be. Oh, that's a two. That's a success. Um, so then I roll against hit their resolute. Okay, well their resolute is a seven. So um... oh, plus a lot. That's also a success with eight rolling really nice today. So that's one d six damage. That's six. And Sorry, then I, I just want to. I, I, I'm sure you're doing it right. I just want to follow along. Um... Uh, yeah, so, so this is the attack with damage, the, did you say? Yeah. This is the attack with the pummel of 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 the axe. Uh, mm -hmm. they are now um uh they are now stunned. Um in this case I suppose, yeah. And yeah, then so you've I done to make a you've attack. done damage to them with a the pommel and now he also gets a free, a free attack another free attack against yeah. them. Yeah. So go ahead with a, a obviously again a flat roll. That's another 6. That's delightful. Nice. And what's the damage on uh, it? What is the damage on my axe? Probably D6, isn't it? Uh, is it are most single-handed weapons a D8? D8, okay. That makes more sense. I think... Seven! Oh! You know, that's not not bad. Um, so that's that. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four. The pain thresholds are per attack, not per round, right? Yeah, 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 they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Malamai, basically, having been surprised by this goblin, uh, takes a step back, whips his, his uh, axe out, and as he draws it up, thrusts it right in the goblin's face, sending it reeling back um, with uh, a, a, a ex exclamation of pain, and then brings the axe down on the thing's shoulder with an unpleasant crunching noise. It uh, squeals and sort of flails at him with his club. It's not dead, but he's he's definitely hurt it um, significantly. Uh, Elindra. Currently holding a Garug. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm happy for you to, like, I don't think it's an action to drop the <laughs> the bundled Garug cub, you know? It is, it is to draw your sword, but... You mean it's not an action to gently place the Garug cub on the ground? <laughs> I think you can achieve both in the same. They're, they're fairly robust, aren't they? Um, okay, yeah. So she's going to drop the cub, draw her sword, and move towards the, the, the cave mouth. Mm -hmm. um, um, is yeah. there, a, like, am I within range of someone to engage there, or is it more just. I'm going to say. I'm going to give you this one. I described Aaron as having been knocked back, right? And therefore, Cleaver striding after him. So I think he's a bit out of range of the doorway. But I think Malamai came straight out and got attacked by this goblin. So I reckon you can engage that goblin if you if you run to the cave mouth and want to engage with it. And of course, you having a long weapon, that gives you uh, a free attack, right? Then let's do that. I think that's it's just flat cool. rolls, right? Flat rolls. Okay, so she hasn't got the rope. So she hit, um, and the damage is gonna be 
D12 plus D4 plus 1. 15. Oh, and you're flanking, of course, so it was a plus 2 and you get extra damage, but 15 uh, is fine. Um, I'll go roll some more if you want. It's it's fine. Uh, <laughs> you can do if you want to see how high you could have gone. Um, uh, sure. What does the what's the flanking? It's another D four, is it? Yeah, it's D four. Oh, there's a four on that one, so nineteen. Nineteen. Um, Elindra, <laughs> you emerge from the uh, the cave mouth. Would you be like bell like what's? Is there any kind of war cry situation going on here, or? Um, or at least a shit, you know, a mindless sh shout of rage or anything. I, I think she, um, I think she is probably going to just swear under her breath <laughs> and 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 get to the violence. Really, like she was doing something. She's been interrupted. It's a pain. We're all gathering corruption here. Like we can't let them through the cave. This is not the afternoon that she was hoping for. No, no, understandably so, so. Fuck's sake, and then murder. Um, so, uh, and appropriately, as you come out, you come out um, kind of swinging uh, your blade uh, upwards from the left. It cleaves through the goblin entirely, uh, separating the goblin's uh, trunk from its bottom half. A great fountain of uh, gushing blood washes over the stones as the two halves of the goblin scatter across uh, the stones and it definitely gives at least some pause um, to the many other treasure hunters kind of like charging forward to see this horrible fate delivered to one of their number um, and then we've got Cleaver again um, Aaron Dar, do you want to um, roll a defense at minus seven for me please it's still minus seven why would it change I wasn't sure if that was the sneak attack thing, but no, that's wow, Cleaver. that's Cleaver's strong of seventeen. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I still don't have my dagger out. That is dead on. That is a success. That's a success. Okay. Nice. Um, uh, are you re reposting? How? What damage is an unarmed strike again? Is it one d four? Uh, yeah, that rings a bell. I might as well. Sure, absolutely. Oh yeah, because you're yeah you you haven't drawn your blade yet. No. Um, okay. Uh, right <laughs> now, this is going to get complicated. So, uh, what is your strong? My strong is an even ten. Right. Oh no! What have I done? Uh, okay. Um, so that... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> uh, that's going to be that and that. Okay. So... Deals that damage... Uh, okay, so here's what happens you strike at Cleaver, kind of swing, swing out for him to just kind of presumably push him back with like a sharp blow. To, to you tell me what part of the body you try and hit to get Cleaver to back off away from you. Well, he's quite a bit taller than me, um, he is, and it's not very gentlemanly, but it was a common tactic in the streets of Indra right. to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna um, go go for the plums, as they say. Give him the, 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 the goblin goblin squeeze. Yes. Um so uh as you do that, um far faster than you, uh Cleaver reaches down, grips your hand, rolls his body, and flings you bodily through the air to slam into the uh the stone of the cave mouth where you kind of tumble to the ground, uh, taking three damage, ignoring armor, um, and putting you in position for a free attack, which isn't going to include his actual second attack. So what that does mechanically, um, 
if anyone's interested, this is wrestler at master level. Oh, um, oh no! Basically, anyone who hits him in melee, he needs to pass a quick test modified by strong. If he succeeds, first he's not hit. Second, he throws you for d6 damage, which for uh, uh, an enemy is three, ignoring armor. And you end up prone, knocked out of breath, and unable to perform any active actions in your following turn. That's just not okay. fair. And he gets a free attack. It's pretty good, on, right? On you while you're prone as well. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, yeah. I don't think the rules have put you at advantage for prone. We we determined that, but okay, good, yeah. thank God. I think it does. I, like, I have I have no wish to change that. I think it makes absolute sense to gain advantage on someone if you're striking them when they're prone. Um, yeah, but there we go. We didn't know about master wrestlers when we house ruled that, though, did we? No. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> it also gave some reason to to knock people prone when you go over their pain threshold, as opposed to uh, I say I stand behind it completely. I, I think yeah, it's I'm... the least of of your worries if someone has done this to you. I'm not really arguing the house rule. Uh, I'm just you know, uh, ouch. <laughs> yeah. Um. So for that free attack, Askarai, could you roll your defense at minus nine, please? Who? By Askarai, do you mean Aaron? Uh, I, I do mean Aaron, yeah, I mean you, yeah, yeah. Minus nine, four or less. That's a 19, so that's not a pass. Okay, could you roll your armor, please? Yep. That's five. He's definitely only in combat with me, as in, like, there's no one else nearby, is there? Correct, why? Yeah, it's acrobatics, oh. but... You know, oh, we won't be no. wanting no, it. No, 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 no one else. No one else is engaged. Sorry. Uh, five armor. Uh, five armor. Okay. Well, he kind of bends over and drives that punch dagger down, and the the dagger part doesn't actually impact you, but the side of his fist catches you square in the cheek, uh, and you feel maybe not something break, uh, but perhaps something fracture. Take two toughness. Okay. Fortunately for you, you defended against his big attack. Because he does have a big attack per round, and you defended against that, so that is something. Um, however, he's now going to hit you with his actual second attack. So, can you roll uh, defense at minus nine, please? That is thirteen, so a fail. And, and armor nine. is six. Okay, uh, you've got the measure of how he's like pounding his fists into the ground, and you roll away and just take, you just feel the dagger like leaving a cut across the back of your neck from which blood is flowing but not spurting. Um, take another one toughness, please. I think you've been lucky. Mm, I'm still alive. <laughs> Good armor rolls for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the pain uh, threshold goes. Over is in each individual hit, right? That's exactly what I said earlier. And it is an individual hit, not per round. Uh, and yes. how is your toughness doing? I'm on five out of fifteen. Okay, it could be a lot worse. It uh, could. And remember, and... on your turn, you you don't have any less actions, but you can't take active actions, uh, which includes attacking. Uh, I does it include attacking? What is the so. definition? Like a lot of a, a lot of skill abilities give you active actions. No, you know what? I... Describes them as combat actions or movement actions. I think it's just that you basically can't use abilities. But some are, abilities that's it says don't active. But some abilities don't say active, they... do they? Because yeah, in which case, in which case, you can use them. What I mean is, cool. if an ability says active. You can't use it, cool. Because if it meant you couldn't attack, it would say you don't get combat actions. So that's how I read it, certainly. Mm -hmm. So and it makes sense. You've had the wind knocked out. You can't. You can ah. You can strike back, but you can't focus enough to like do something that needs a little bit of focus and concentration. So that makes sense. Um, makes sense. Okay, right. That's Cleaver's turn. 
Um, what's Revelia doing, Stephen? Um, that's a good. Well, I, I mean, like she's she's going to be dropping the Garud cub and um, drawing her sword and stepping in. She does not get. Well, I guess I don't. I don't think she's in range of anybody. And if she was, she doesn't get the long attack anyway, with sword and shield. So she's getting to the cave mouth essentially. Drawing the weapons, getting to the cave mouth. Yeah. Seems yeah. Fair. Um. Okay. Farron was with you, Aaron. Um. What What is Farron going to do? I mean, he's going to try and uh, defend me. I think attack Cleaver, right? I think uh, yeah. that's got to be the case. Yeah. I don't think Aaron has any control over that. I think he's just going for it. Absolutely. Um, um right well let me let me see yeah there's no limit on how many times you can do that that defend thing um so there we go uh okay so have um Ferrin do an attack at a flat rate please it's accurate 11 would he technically be flanking Oh no, because I'm we, prone. We, we have had this discussion. You can't be a part of a flanking if you're prone, which again yep. makes sense. Uh, that is a pass. Okay. Uh, well then, <laughs> I mean, he's. John? Sorry, your microphone cut out. Oh, I'm sorry. What's my... first? Oh, seven. Okay. Well, this attack probably isn't happening then. No. Uh, it... To uh, and kind of like digs his claws and his fangs into the, the leather of Cleaver's uh, fairly sporadic armor. Uh, and Cleaver almost absentmindedly reaches back over his shoulder, grabs Ferrin by the scruff and slams him to the ground. Uh, much in the same fashion as he did yours. Uh, it's just going to be three damage without armor. It's going to be a... Um, uh, and then a, a free attack on Ferran. Uh, are these free... God, this is insane. Uh, I want you to know, by the way, you know how... He's kind, kind of jazzed him up a bit. Hmm. Yeah, we're sort of sporadically losing you for a couple of seconds at a time. Yeah. And then when you come back, you're very loud as well. I think there's some some juggling going on. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know it's a lower quality mic. Um, but there is a, a certain... Let me try and sort something out here. One second, I just have to do some stuff. Talk amongst yourselves about how overpowered wrestling is. <laughs> it is pretty overpowered. Uh, way OP. Also, I'm trying to remember whether I have Ferran's health recorded correctly, because uh, I can't remember if there was any healing that happened last session. And I don't think what there was, so this could go badly. I'm Maybe going to be last... honest, I... I'm pretty sure. Before, I'm pretty sure Cleaver can go from a hundred to zero on Farron in in one strike. I'm going to be brutally honest. Yeah. Especially if he gets over the pain threshold. Yeah. Get a second hit. Well, I guess you can choose that he doesn't get a second hit. But so. Yeah. There's. I don't. Oh my god. What an what an afternoon we are having. <laughs> yeah. Getting those bear cubs out are the least of your concerns at this point. There was there was a moment, I think, before Elinja dropped the Garug that she just thought about pulling a knife and kind of cutting its throat just to not have to think about it. But um Oh my god, that would be uh, profoundly evil. Going on with this. Mike, can you hear me? That's yeah, okay. Yeah, we got you. Mad. Something is major going on with it here. Technology. Like I can hear multiple of myself in my in my earphones. 
best that I do. No, Russ, you sound okay. Are they saying the same thing? Because otherwise we might need to get Johnny in here. Um, that that you know what I'm gonna do. You know what I'm gonna do. Let's. I'm gonna hop out of Streamyard for a second and come back in. Great, great. Extend, Johnny, right. extend the dilemma. Our, um... So, which one of us is taking over as GM? I vote for Chris because if Chris is GM, then all of the Garys will definitely be fine and live happy ever after. Yeah, you know Clean exactly has what's going to happen if if I'm GMing and that's oops, accidentally wander home again, and we're all just going to sit down and, and talk about our feelings for a while, and uh, maybe have an adventure with a talking mushroom. I mean, that that does sound preferable to us all being beaten to a pulp by Cleaver one by one. So, to be fair, we have already had a conversation with the giant toad. Or yeah. rather, <laughs> a face is warped on the side of the giant toad. So it's that's quite a like wonder the, home already. It yeah. doesn't quite feel like the wonder home vibe to me, but maybe I'm not an expert. <laughs> how, how is my... How do I sound? Sounds fine. Yeah, fine. Okay, it is awful in my ears, but I think we're just going to have to put up with it because uh, I think my mic might be breaking. Um, and cycling the sound inside it. So it, it's like I can hear myself very loud in my own ears. Oh. Um, so, right. yeah. Um, see if you can retain sanity over the next hour of that. Yeah. Th this mildly happened before, which is why I had the. I was using Bluetooth rather than. Um, which I still technically can do. Let me um, play back a bit. Sorry, folks. I am playing with various USB ports here. One second. Oh, fucking hell, I know why. I still... Yeah. Yeah. Can someone speak yeah, so I can hear someone else? Hello. Hello. I Testing. still had the fucking Bluetooth function on. That was it. Never mind. Yep. It's all good now. It's all good. Okay. Right. Where the fuck are we? Uh, Farron's horrible death. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> now, well, how much toughness does Farron have left? So, I just realized that Farron was injured in the last combat and hadn't mm -hmm. been healed. So, he was only on five toughness and he's just taken three. So, now he's on two. Oh, right. Okay. And how much armor does he have? Uh, none, because he hasn't been trained to wear it yet. Yep. So, um let me double check this because it doesn't look good no. um so yeah uh, let's have him roll a defense at minus nine please okay where am i it's three nine four Fail. Fail. Okay. Well, Farron has no armor, you say? Nope. Farron takes seven toughness. Farron is down. Um, I don't. Have we had the case before where we've decided what to do with an ally and death rolls and stuff? I think because the last time this happened was when Askarai stabbed him mm -hmm. that we, we gave him death rolls. I think it makes sense for an ally who's been paid for, pay, you know what I mean, like you spent experience to gain, so in this case, Revelia and Ferrin, they get death rolls, other allies do not. Does everyone think that's a that's a fair idea? I think that's yeah. entirely fair, yeah. I okay. think so, yeah. All right. Well, that death roll will happen on Ferrin's next turn, then. Um, yeah, he, he throws him to the ground and you you hear the punch dagger crack uh, into Farron's side with a, a sickening thud. Um, Aaron Dar, it's your turn now. I am going to do a quick test to get to my feet in one as a free Is that action. Active? No, it's free. Great. Uh, target thirteen. That's a pass with a seven. Uh, with my movement action, I draw my weapons. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to attack him. No, he'll get, I, I think he'll get the same roll on your response attacks. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to attack him. I think I'm standing sort of un unsteadily on my feet. Uh, and I'm going to say something cool that I can't immediately think of right now. Okay. Get the hell away from my cat. Kind of. I want to emphasize this. If you don't attack him, he'll never die. Yeah, but he, he can't because he's drawn. You've stood up. You've drawn your weapons, so you've got to, You can either engage with your movement action no, or attack. Getting, you're not currently engaged. Is, the getting up was a free action. Yeah. Drawing movement action got a combat action left. Like this is the thing. If you're hoping he'll attack you and you'll get those reposts, those reposts he still can make that roll for. Yeah, you know I... What I mean. So like, it, I understand that you are. He get he might get a free attack if you attack him, but bear in mind he will still get his normal attacks against you. And you, you know what I mean? Like I I get where you're coming from, and if you want to make that decision, that's fine. But if you want to stay safe from him, you can't. I was waiting for reinforcements, but I'll just attack. Sure, him. no, 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 that, that, that and that's valid. I just I was worried that you were like, ah, I'm going to let him and attack with the riposte, and I wanted to make sure you know he will still get his riposte to your riposte. Not just a not against a normal attack. I just wanted you to know that. We have already done that, so I don't know why I didn't think you'd know that. Does that make sense, though? Yes. It doesn't, because I'm rambling, but yeah. Basically, <laughs> if he attacks you and you get and you he misses and you get your riposte, if you strike with your riposte, he will still get a roll to throw you. I'm not going to attack because I'm waiting for my allies to join the battle. And I'm waiting for his allies to join the battle to use them as meat shields. Yeah, I, I think Perfect. Aaron has definitely earned himself a breather this round. Absolutely. Um, okay, next is the treasure hunters. Um, and uh, Asker, I saw nine of them. One of them is now dead. Um, so the other eight that you can see um, are going to come for the people who are out of the cave, right? And I think they're going to do that in a fairly even-handed manner. Um, although I, I'm not entirely sure how many of them are going to come, because they probably think Aaron's dead, because he's fighting Cleaver. Um, so apart from that, there is Askeriz at the cave entrance, uh, Malamai, Revelia, and Alindra. Um, I mean, there are eight of them. So, But I would also say that Askeriz is more difficult to get to than the others. Because he's probably stopped before the others have come through. Um, so, with that in mind, why don't we say that one of them um, runs to engage with uh, Aaron Dar? One of them runs to engage with Askarai. And everyone else has two of them run to them. So that will mean, well, I'll say what it will mean in a second. Um, and this is this is actually interesting because Elindra and Malamai were stood next to each other. But I think we'll we'll try and avoid that all-encompassing mass melee if we can, uh, because that gets super confusing. Uh, and I think it's enough that enough of them are running at you that like just taking a step back to guard from them and stuff. You spread out a little bit from the, the cave entrance. I think that's it's fair narratively and it's also helps me stay sane. So um with that in mind, um what we've got is let's deal with Aaron first, because this was probably going to be the complex one. Uh there is a goblin with an axe uh running towards you who is going to attack you, Aaron. Um so that is an attack at a minus one, please. Okay, target thirteen. And a ten, so a pass. Okay. So now what happens? <laughs> Are you going to like redirect them? Are you going to repost? What's going to happen here? I'm going to redirect onto Cleaver. Okay. Or I'm going to. 
try and redirect onto Cleaver because I need so to do what's a the mechanic quick... for that. That is a quick check. Is it balanced but against their quick? No, just a me just quick. A quick check. Okay. It would be the same either way because they have a quicker turn. That is a pass with a five and a thirteen. Okay, so now what happens is they're attacking him, right? Mm -hmm. Does he get a defense roll? No. He does no defense not get a roll. defense roll. Okay. I am going to, just for the narrative version of this, it might not stay the same every round. I'm going to say he's taken by surprise by this, and Soak is not going to do his wrestling thing. I think that's fair. Also, yeah, yeah, I think that's fair, right? Um, so, with that in mind, uh, their thing against him. Okay. Um, um, so, this goblin with the axe kind of like comes for you kind of like howling and kind of wheeling its axe around its head. The moment it starts to strike down, you kind of like drop down, kick at the back of its knee, and it kind of like twists down and its axe impacts into um, the side of, of Cleaver to no apparent damage. It just, the axe kind of like slides along the leather padding on his side. Um, he looks mad though, uh, for what it's worth. He looks real mad about it. Um, at the but, goblin yeah. or at me? At everyone. He just looks. He looks mad about a lot <laughs> of things. Um, so there we go. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, the treasure hunter's damage not enough to damage Cleaver. So there we go. Um, let's move on to Askarai. You've got a goblin with. And when I say they've got spears, they're like short spears, like basically a stick with a sharp bit of rock or metal on the end, like the cheapest possible option to get a spear, which means they don't have long, they're just like a little okay. jabbing weapon, okay? Um, but he's going to come for you, um, so give me a, a flat... Uh, no, uh, a defense roll at minus one, please, Askarai. Okay, I need a 15. I rolled a 10, which makes it. Okay. Uh, you don't have any response thing, do you? So, Nope. Uh, okay, Alindra. Do you, how many long attacks do you get per turn? Do you get one one per each attacker, or? I think it's one per round. Um, I think I need the next level up in polar mastery for it to be every time. Right. Okay. Mm. Um, so the first one will get the attack on uh, the free attack on engagement. You've already had one though, haven't you? I have. That's true. Yeah. What level of polar mastery do you have? Uh, just novice. All oh, right, and that just increases your damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind then. In that case, can you give me two defense rolls at minus one, please? Sure. As um... six, which pass. They both pass, okay. and I do have a two-handed finesse thing, which is after one successful defense per turn, I can pass a uh, a strong check to push them out of melee. Okay. Uh, well, do you want to do that? There is a changeling with a club, uh, and there is a human with an axe. They're sure. All dressed uh, similarly in rough clothing. <clears throat> uh, let's push the changeling back. Okay. Um, um, is there any so modifier what? on the strong? I mean, it's modified by their strong. If oh, they're minus five, anything. then, please. Okay. I need a 10. I get a 12. So I fail to push them back. Okay. Uh, but they both come at you. They both, th neither of them seem particularly competent. You weave out of the way and try and kind of shove the changeling away, but with a kind of desperate strength, they heave back at you and you just stay kind of like opposed to each other, like them trying to stay out of the range of your blade. It's an incredibly strong changeling, by the way. Uh, treasure hunters have a strength of 15. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those weird things where you try and get a standardized block right and it's just a mass of different people and you're like sure that's kind of weird but sure um okay let's do revelia's defenses shall we um so that's just two defenses at my, again at minus one yeah she gets no no fancy things so uh her defense is 15 she needs a 14 we rolled a 14 and another 14 so yeah again a square off she batters back with her shield they reel back and and stand facing her. She's facing uh, two goblins, both with kind of those short spears. Uh, and Malamai, um, Chris, if you could make his def two defense rolls at a minus one, please, as he faces so that's a 12s. That's 12s or under? 
Uh, that is a perfect failure. Okay. And a success. Okay, let's handle that perfect failure then, please. Um, so that is... Uh, they get a plus 1d6 to the damage roll, uh, which equals that. Could you make an armor roll for Malamai then, please? That's a three. It's a three. Um, okay, well, in that case, that basically neutralizes the... Um, uh, the the kind of perfect uh, hit. Um, could you give Malamai five toughness then, please? Uh, as he is rushed by a human, uh, one of the only individuals actually armed with a, like a more standard sword that they seem to have gotten from somewhere. Um, and he manages to batter them back, but a goblin with one of those short spears steps in and thrusts it into his hip. Um, with uh, a horrible crunching noise, and he gives out a, a cry of pain. Uh, what's his toughness looking like, Chris, out of interest? He has taken half of his toughness that equaled his pain threshold. He is on five out of ten toughness. Oh, wow, okay. Um, so, Steo, it is your turn. Um, uh, oh, I would also say that uh, anyone outside the cave can also see that there are another four treasure hunters clambering down from the uh, promontory overhead. But they are not in range to engage yet. Steo, if you... Um, I think you can run to engage with any of the, the little melees outside let and let's be consistent apart from cleaver um and therefore get a free attack i think uh i'm going to take um i'm going to take the one who is going against Askrai because Askrai is dealing with one enemy and that will mean Askrai is dealing with zero enemies yeah that makes sense um so can you make uh, uh take your free attack then please um which will be at a just a flat flat attack Flat, which is a success by one point. Okay, damage roll, please. D10 plus one. That's eight damage. Seven plus one. Eight, eight damage, uh, which translates as that much damage. Um, yeah, there's a goblin with a spear, and you basically run up and, and thrust into the goblin's side. It gives out a yelp and uh, swipes back at you with its own short spear. Uh, it's wounded, but not yet dead. Um, Askarai, what's Anton going to do? He can... Ask oh, shit. Uh, you were flanking it. Oh, did yeah. you roll the extra damage? I did not. So uh, that's an four, extra right? one damage. I don't think that okay. makes any difference. It, it does not, sadly. It doesn't do pain threshold or anything. Um, yeah, what's Anton going to do? Askarai is going to run up and cast... Blessed shield on himself and seeing Aaron taking a little bit of punishment, Aaron as well. Okay. If he makes it. Okay, if he makes it. A resolute roll, please. Okay, his resolute is 15, so good chances. <laughs> well, we've said that forever, you know. It's a 15. Makes it. Makes it. There we go. Um, okay, and obviously take a temporary corruption, but as we already discussed, he's got a pretty high yeah, corruption pretty threshold, good. right? Um, so there we go. It goes without saying for purposes of Holy Aura, by the way, of course, that none of these individuals are abominations or undead. Um, although the healing itself could be useful, right? Yeah. Um, so there we go. Um, okay, that was a successful thing from Anton DeGesto, who I guess I'm controlling. Uh, he doesn't have a long weapon, so he's going to run up um, you know what? He's going to join the combat with Malamai. Um, I think that's again, he doesn't want to have a, yet another higher link cut down, right? So, um, that puts that puts them there. So, there we go. Um, I get yeah, actually, I think we may not have factored in the, the flanking in uh, Malamai's damage either, but enough turns have passed that I don't want to go back and do that now, just in case I did. Um, okay. That's the end of the round. Askarai, take us off. Askarai has his bow out. Does um, 
could Asprey shoot at Cleaver, or is Cleaver not that big? I don't think Cleaver is big enough to get around our rule, which means okay. that you'd have to. Because we've said right, if you if you flank them, like if you, not as in the mechanic, but if you yeah. like, if I wouldn't be shooting through an ally's area, to I get think them. yeah, I I think you would be yeah yeah yeah. Okay, is, uh, is Cleaver case... currently engaged with anyone though? Like... Yeah, he's engaged with. Um... That's good. Well, he's, he's looming no, Aaron's over. Up. Aaron. Aaron's, he's up. Not... Aaron's up. Aaron's oh, up. Oh, so he is. Yeah, he's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an interesting wrinkle, though, isn't it? If everyone was prone, I'd almost be tempted to say that you you can fire <laughs> that you can fire into that with the with the twenty penalty, right? Um, <laughs> he's... But he's not. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. In that case, Asgore is going to use his movement to swap to his sword and try and stab the guy that's run at him. Absolutely. Uh, okay, give me a flat attack then, please. Okay, I struggle with this right. I think it's a D... I think I need a, a 14 is what I... No, a 16 is what I think I need for a flat attack because the sword has a plus yeah, one. Yeah, because your sword is discreet, right? Yeah. I, yeah, it's oh, my discreet with advantage and a plus one because the sword is like a very fancy sword. Oh, yeah, because you're flanking as well, yeah. Okay, that's a... That's a it's a seven. Nearly a one, but it's a seven. And then the damage is a D8 plus a D4. Nice. Plus one for the fancy sword again. It's super fun. Has it got deep impact and precise? Is that the two things it has? Yeah. Uh, which is... 10 damage. Wow. Um, well, that is enough, my friend. Um, and, uh, yeah, this goblin with the spear kind of, like, turns and kind of faces Steo, kind of, you know, the more imposing of the two of you. Uh, Steo kind of bull rushed um, this individual with um, with his, his long bronze spear. And turning a second away from you was, was a mistake that the goblin will not, will not have time to regret uh, as you whip your sword out um, duck under his guard, thrust into his side and kind of push back and, you, and suddenly you are free like the goblin is tumbled to the ground breathing his last uh, and you and Steo are free of uh, free of combat nice okay um, Steo, uh, or rather Chris um, Malamai uh, he's facing a uh, human with a sword and a goblin with a spear. Degesto is with him, so he's no longer flanked. So, yeah. Um, I suppose I, it doesn't really matter who I go for here, so I'll go the human with the sword, I suppose. It's all just flavor. It's all just um, flavor. Okay. And uh, once again, I think I think it would be foolish of me not to use Axe Artist here. So yeah, um, I think my, flat, my flat attack is an 11, which is a success. I then uh, would roll against their resolute, which I think you said before was minus one. It's minus three. Minus their three. resolute is seven, so it's a plus three to whatever you roll. So 11 or less for the second. Yep, that passes. So he is uh, now dazed, and I get another free attack. But before we do that, let's resolve the damage from the, from the pommel blow. Mm -hmm. That is another six. Nice. And now okay. the attack of opportunity procs, mm -hmm. uh, which is a fail. He misses, whiffs the big axe attack. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he sends the human reeling back with a, a precisely placed crack of the uh, the pommel of the axe, uh, but the follow-up sweep, uh, is maybe because he's moving forward at a slower pace due to the wound in his hip, um, doesn't connect. But he has definitely cracked the human uh, rather painfully in the face. Um, okay, Elindra. Yes. Uh, right, so she's fighting two treasure two, hunters. Two treasure hunters. There's a changeling with a club and a human with an axe. Yeah, she does not like the look of this changeling, so for flavor purposes, that's who she's going for. Fair enough. Um, so we're already engaged. It's none of that freebie stuff. But yes, nope. the attack hits and is going to do. There's no flanking, is there? Uh, no, it's just you against the two of them and there's no reverse flanking. 15 effect. damage. Whoa! 
Um, She's mad. Yeah. Uh, Elindra steps forward and, and strikes out, and their training is nothing in comparison to yours. Um, you strike out uh, and with the tip of your blade tear the changeling's throat out. Uh, she topples backwards onto the ground, blood uh, running in thick rivulets down towards the, the, the lake shore, um, kind of instantly, instantly unconscious and dead um, from the uh, sudden change in blood pressure. Uh, the human with the axe kind of wide-eyed turns around and, and sort of looks thoroughly intimidated by this. Correctly. Correctly. Uh, there you go. Um, right, we're on Cleaver. Uh, but hey, your acrobatics the other way might be useful, right? Um, okay. Uh, give me a defense roll at minus seven, please. Oh no, you're being flanked, minus nine. Target five and I rolled a six, so that is a fail. But I'm going to attempt my acrobatics quick roll. Oh, so you don't need to make your defense to, to do that? No. Okay. Please, God. Target 13. I'm spending an XP. <laughs> sure. That's an 11, so that's a pass. Okay, so now Cleaver is hitting the goblin who's next to you, yep. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a uh, quite a lot of damage. Um, here's an interesting question because <laughs> we've determined that like it's it's the person being hit who decides what happens when their pain threshold goes over, right? I was going to say, so what happens when it's... Well, me. That's It's obviously me that decides that, because, yeah. And why would he take another free attack? Why would he, like... Well, he's mad at the goblin, but, like... He's very angry. He is. But he's going to be he's going to be happy to let the, the goblin go prone as with a, a massive sweep of one of those punch daggers, which you, you kind of duck and reach out, grab the sort of tangle the wrist of the goblin and pull him in the way of it. And the goblin almost does a kind of like, he's just punch daggered in the chest and does it, he's like lifted off the ground with a noise and then like tumbles backwards, not dead, but kind of grievously wounded and kind of crawling and tumbling on the floor um, next to you. So that worked quite well. Um, unfortunately for you, Cleaver gets two attacks. Um, so give me another defense roll please at minus nine minus seven because the goblin is the prone. goblin is now prone so you're not yes very well spotted minus seven target of seven which is an eight so that's a fail okay uh give me an armor roll then please okay i'm rolling a d8 and a d6 blessed shield yeah um five plus three plus one nine yeah um the punch dagger comes towards you and kind of his hand kind of like it, it sort of makes contact with you, but a very glancing blow. And you can see kind of like almost uh, glittering sparks coming off as you feel uh, the warmth of Father Anton's blessing wa wash over you. Um, yeah. Okay. We, we did all right. Of course, then we have to deal with the people attacking him and him fucking killing them off the back of it. Um, but still, for now, that's all right. Uh, Revelia, uh, fighting two goblins with spears. Okay, so she is going to aim for goblin number one. Understand. Wow, and that's a 20 on the attack. Okay. Um, I know they're only goblins, but I'm quite tempted to... Yeah, I think we're going to... Um, I think we're going to re-roll that. <clears throat> Because okay. I think the numbers we're up against are just enough that okay. seems worth it. <laughs> it's another fail. Okay. Cool. Uh, but not a 20, I assume. No, not a 20. Okay. Um, so yeah, Revelia strikes out against the two goblins facing her, but you know, even short spears are still spears, right? And it's quite difficult to like move around to a point where she can maintain her defense and strike out and ultimately... That is the case. Okay, scariest part of the round. 
um, Farron's death rolls. Let us remind ourselves again, folks, of how these work, because we've only had them a couple of times in the campaign so far. Um, basically, uh, at zero toughness, a death test is made every round with a d20. Um, on a result of one, Farron will get up, uh, recover and get up with a d4 of toughness and can act next round. Uh, two to ten, there is no effect. 11 to 19, a counter starts. And every time, basically, if 11 to 19 is rolled three times, Farron will die. And a roll of 20 is immediate death. Um, and just to remind I, everyone already knows, but to remind everyone out there, um, XP cannot be spent to re-roll death rolls. So, John, please make a death roll for poor Farron, please. 13. Okay. So that is a counter of one. Baron has two more times to roll that amount, but you know, maybe, maybe he'll roll one next round. Or maybe, let's not think about that. Aaron Dar. There is no help immediately coming to you, by the look. <laughs> so I could try and disengage and move Closer to everyone else. Mm -hmm. But they're all occupied, and I'm very worried about Ferran, and I'm feeling the warmth of Prios covering me, and I feel that Prios is on my side, so I might try hitting him. Sure, absolutely. Um, okay, give me an, uh, a flat. Attack roll, then, please. That is a hit. Okay, so let me <laughs> let me see if that is a hit. Um, uh, uh, okay. Um, what is your strong again? Sorry. Flat. Flat. Okay. He fails. Make your damage roll, please. I've forgotten what I roll. It's been so long. <laughs> uh, so long. D12. Who's bound to fail on sooner or later, right? I rolled an eight. Okay. Uh, well, you think you have the measure of him a little bit. He tries to grab at your arm again. Uh, and you slip under it, and you don't manage to get a, a... You were going for a deep strike, but because you've had to dodge his sort of grab of you, um, you have to wheel around to the side and just thrust and see what you can. And you kind of thrust sort of... Your blade enters his arm just above his elbow and then runs up a good kind of like half foot or so before you kind of withdraw it and then... As you were drawing it and slashing it, a great flap of skin and flesh opens up on the side of his arm, um, instantly making all the players uh, on on this stream uncomfortable by the look of their faces. Um, yeah, it, you don't think it's a it's a really significant wound, but you have hurt him. He doesn't seem to feel it at all. In fact, if anything, uh, he has he's kind of got this slightly tusked grin on his face that seems to get a little bit wider uh, almost as if your your active resistance is thrilling him somehow he's uh, you have noticed but he's got this odd habit i think i'd said at the beginning of like blinking quite rapidly um and uh, the intensity of that increases uh, increases somewhat um yeah uh Okay, uh, treasure hunter time. Um, so uh, we we will deal with the the four, other four of them approaching in a second. We'll do the ones who are already engaged first. Um, the one engaging you, Aaron, is just going to clamber back to his feet. Um, I think I'm. Um, what's the what's the getting up thing when you don't have any bloody acrobatics or anything? Uh, roll control. a quick, and you get to your feet with a movement action. Right. Uh, and if you fail, then it takes the whole turn. Okay. Well, they're not going to use a movement action anyway, so they're, they're just going to clamber back up to their feet. Um, 
Elindra, the one facing you, is going to attack you for uh, just a defense roll at minus one, please. Sure thing. Oh, that's a fail. Okay, and an armor roll then, please. <clears throat> Seven. Uh, okay, yeah, they uh, strike at you with that axe, and you feel the impact, and it does hurt, but it doesn't make its way through your uh, your chainmail. Okay, next we've got two attacking Revelia, please. Sure thing. Is minus one on the defense again? Correct. Uh, she defends against the first one, but not the second. Okay, an armor roll, please. Uh, armor roll is a D8. Oh, uh, yeah, and they, they should have been flanking, sorry. Oh, okay. So it actually should have been minus threes. That's fine. The 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 passes were all with a, a pretty big margin, um, sure. and the fail was a fail. Um, yeah, she rolled a two on her armor. Okay. Um, well, then, with the flanking, that is going to be toughness five that she'll take. Oof. Um, okay. As one as the the spears moves around the underside of her uh, of her shield and plunges into the top of her leg. Cool. I think she got. I think she got hurt last session, so she's not looking so great right now. Okay. Um, next, we have uh, Malamai, please. Make a defense at a minus one. I'm flanked, though, so it's minus. No, he's not, because Degasto's there now. Oh, fair play. Uh, let's do it. That's a success. Okay. Um, and I uh, will say that the other one's going to come for Degesto, who will also make a defense. God, his defense is awful. Um, why is that so bad? Oh, because he has Berserker. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, it's really bad, though. Um... Yeah, he does not succeed with that, and his armor is that much. And the... oh, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, uh, Degesto is um, basically one of the, the one of the goblins. Uh, the goblin facing him kind of swings around with the blunt end of its uh, spear and kind of cracks him alongside the head uh, to no visible result. Um, his eyes are wide, and he's in fact, slightly foaming at the mouth as he swings uh, wildly for it with his uh, fire tube. So you, you don't think he's in any immediate danger from what just happened. Uh, but we do have four other treasure hunters coming to attack people, and I think they would reasonably want to attack people who aren't currently being attacked, um, which would mean <laughs> that uh, one of them is going to attack Askarai, one of them is going to attack Anton. One of them is going to attack Steo, and I know we will get a, uh, a free attack on that. Um, no one else is unengaged, are they? I don't think. Um, so let's just have a roll to determine who of those people is going to get an extra person on them. I think that's reasonable. And the cat has his own opinions. Luckily for everyone, it's Steo. So the first thing that happens as a a changeling with a sword and a goblin with a spear run up to you, Steo, is you get to attack both of them. Hello! Um, great. Um, flat attacks. Flat attacks. First one is success. They are now disengaged from me. Mm -hmm. And also take damage. And they also take six damage. Six damage. Okay. Yep. That's the changeling with a sword who is knocked back away from you with a, a light spear wound. Next. Likewise, is disengaged. Mm -hmm. Five damage. Okay. Yeah, you've left both of them with fairly light spear wounds, but they're kind of like staggering back away from you, Vimus, swiping to desperately try and fend away any of the spear thrusts you do. Uh, and they are indeed disengaged. Um, Askarai, can you give me a defense roll as a, a goblin with an axe uh, comes for you? Yep. A minus a one, please. Oh, and a fifth. That's an 18, so fail. Okay, give me an armor roll then, please. 
I'm going to say that I don't have my fancy cloak because I was using it on the Garrett, so just 1d4. Very honest. That's a two. Okay. Um, the goblin's axe crunches into your side. You don't think it penetrated your leathers, but you feel uh, a rib at very least creaking, um, if not, in fact, breaking for three toughness, please. Okay. Uh, and then could you make a defense roll for Anton, please? At minus one. Yes. Uh, Anton. Let me take his defense. Defense is seven. God, Anton's terrible. <laughs> Neither six or less. That's a definite fail. He does have blood this shield, at least. Thank yeah, God. Give me those armor rolls, then, please. Okay, I'm gonna. Sh it must be a D4. Yeah, D4 and a D6. That's ten armor. So max roll. Nice. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the there's a changeling running for him with a spear. It thrusts out, and the spear almost kind of like slows in the air and kind of deflects off to the side. Um, with a uh, spray of glittering sparks, as um, whether it's Prios or his own uh, kind of like mystical energies or something has uh, decided to protect Anton on this particular occasion. Um, so there we go. Um, as they uh, ran forward, by the way, um, and I'll just give the three Askari, Anton, and Steo. Could you all give me, please, a vigilant roll at plus one? Yep. Okay. Um, you might as well make the roll for Anton as well, though it doesn't particularly matter as long as as long as one of you okay. um, sort of heard. Um, but essentially, okay. as they were kind of like leaping down um, from the rocks. They were kind of like howling at each other at yourselves. Uh, but one of them, uh, let's say it was um, the go one, the goblin with a spear who tried to attack Steo, uh, shouted at the top of its lungs, Member! Member! Bartho wants one alive! Keep one alive! Bartho was that. All of these people are fucking dead. <laughs> yep. You think, Askra, you may have worked out who Cleaver's working for. Yeah. God. Worked oh. out. Or had him shouted at you. And Tom did here as well. Yeah. Steo, you are unengaged, my friend. What are you doing? Great. How many are on Askra at the minute? One. Got okay, I'm going to go and engage them. Free up your DPS. Yeah. Specifically your range DPS, which, you know, might be handy against someone like Cleaver. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll take your long attack first, please. That's a, uh, a flat long attack. That's a success. The damage is 11. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, I don't know why I made that noise. Uh, that's over its uh, pain threshold. I'll take the free attack, please, Bob. Mm hmm. Reference. Like it. That is another success. Mm hmm. And 10 damage. Uh, you dash up to the goblin, uh, the goblin woman with the axe facing uh, Askarai, and essentially just impale her through the back with one spear thrust, kick her off the end. She's still reeling, thrust in again kick her off the end, and this time she tumbles down to the ground dead. Uh, yeah, she, she's done. She's done. She's done. So Four. where am I at now? Because I have the... I That was my that was basically my free action. That was a movement. Yeah. So and I'm going to use my... Attack. I, I yeah. yeah, you've got another movement. Yeah, and which means I've got Which means attack. you've got another attack. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, I think at this point... <sighs> I, I the, know we the, are trying to avoid it, but there is something that makes some sense, right? There is, but like, as, like, uh... okay, the DPS is free, but he's surrounded by two other nerds. The guy who will kill me in one shot is still up ahead. Uh, or I could we'll free up Anton. One shot. He's flipping formidable. He is um, formidable, and he's currently 
facing one of your friends who's being <sighs> punched to pieces. Gradually mauled to death, but also has... The thing is now, just systemically, um, Aaron plus Divine Shield is going to be a better damage tank than me with no Divine Shield, really quite crappy out armor and really quite crappy toughness. Steel's not really built for anything except getting easy to hit rolls. Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, do you know what? And like the, the the we have to hold on to the drama, and it Steel is obviously seeing Aaron taking a pasting and is going to charge Cleaver. Yeah, it's it's hero time. It is hero time. There's, there's also another ally that you uh, haven't taken into account in, in your reckonings. That that might can't, need I some help. Can can't help the meow meow. That's fair. That's fair. Not in the midst of combat. Um, okay. Right. Well, uh, it's going to be a flanking attack on uh, on Cleaver, so make an attack at a plus two, please. I bet it's not going to be a flanking attack. That's a feel anyway. I mean, in a way. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, okay. So, you yeah, you, you run up and engage Cleaver, um, sort of thrusting at him, but... Uh, He's he's pretty fast, and he uh, you don't think he knew you were coming, but just the way he moved as he he made another strike for uh, uh, for Arindar moved him out of the way of your spear thrust. Um, so you know, bad luck. Um, okay, who's next? It is Anton, uh, who is facing off um, against a changeling with a spear. Um, do you want to make a roll for his attack if that's what he's doing, please? Yeah, I think so. that's his, his his best bet. Uh, his attack is surprisingly like not too bad. It's a nine, uh, so it needs nine. That's an eight. Um, so he hits. So one is a d10 damage. Uh, I think yeah, a d10 damage. That's a 10. Nice. Um, unfortunately, just matching their pain threshold. Um, but still, uh, as the change... Because I imagine, that I, in my head, Anton is like the, the one furthest back, right? He's still stood at the cave door, and this changeling kind of drops down next to him and is thrust at him with his spear. Anton sort of reels back, kind of like wheel, grabs his flail, wheels it round, and kind of swings it up from the ground, and the um, the heavy weights on the end of it kind of slam into this changeling's chin and leave it kind of like knocked back and it feels like it's almost but not quite broken its actual damn neck uh, and it sort of reels back against the stone and sort of like tries to tries to kind of grapple into the flail with its spear but doesn't manage to do so uh, but it's taken a very heavy blow indeed okay uh, and now we've got Degesto who is uh fighting various people uh, and he's going to take a swing at the wounded human with the sword um, and to do this needs that no, he, he's lost in the middle of a rage and he's swinging wild, he doesn't need, he doesn't manage to connect um, okay background to the beginning uh, Askari, you are free again and I think we said, like, here's the thing about firing into stuff. Like, didn't we say, I think I said if you can get a good angle on, like, their back, you can still do it. Yeah. Uh, but obviously that comes with the, the, the dangers of firing into combat. Um, and also how I, far am I going to have to move? to? Like... Right, right, right. Um, good question. Do I see it as being... In my head, it's all quite tight and flush against the wall. So I think... No, you know what? For the case of this, because it because it's like flush against this wall almost, I think you only need one movement action. I'm going to be nice. I think you only okay. need one movement action to be able to get... But you also need to swap your weapons, right? Yeah, valid. I think if... Um... Okay, so I need to swap my weapons and make a move in action. I, I guess I need my... Hmm. 
probably in that case probably makes sense to use my movement action this time to swap weapons and then shoot right once and then shoot land. one of the unengaged treasure hunters and then yeah that's very very good thinking um okay there is uh there's two wounded individuals there's a changeling with a sword and a goblin with a spear uh actually they're changing with a sword okay uh hatred of your own kind so um yeah that'll just be a static uh attack please okay is this this, uh is this a a armor piercing or armor piercing to take double shot i need to use up my movement multiple actions Yeah. yeah okay so i need a six that's a 10 so it makes it and the damage is a d 10 plus 1 ignoring armor, which is 6 ignoring armor. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the arrow impacts into the, the, the changeling's arm, and he's like literally kind of stuck halfway through its arm. Uh, the changeling gives a howl and kind of almost drops the sword and then grasps it with the other hand and kind of starts limping forward with the sword raised. Um, these aren't fearsome individuals, but they seem somewhat desperate at least. Um, Malamai, uh, there is, uh, he's facing two individuals. One of them is wounded. I'm assuming he's going to go for them, maybe. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. Yeah, let's do that. So, that is a miss. Okay, never mind. Uh, Malamai, still hurting from the pain in the wound in his hip, um, strikes out but does not make contact. Uh, Elindra, you have a human with an axe facing you. Cool. Um, try and hit him with my sword, which, uh, which uh, is just a standard, standard, no advantage. Standard attack that succeeds, and we are going to do 11 damage. 11 damage. Uh, well, let me tell you, that goes over their pain threshold. Lovely. Then let's have another attack. <clears throat> well, technically, I decide, don't I? Do I? Oh, that's true. No, the players decide. Always the player. the player. Oh, just the players always decide. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it then. Uh, so that attack hits and damage is going to be nine. Okay. Um, yeah, with two great arcing blows from your blade, um, you sever the, the the first slashes across his torso and leaves a great bleeding rent in his chest, and the second blow. Uh, slices off his arm at you know about halfway down the upper arm. Um, he gives a kind of like d- almost comedically dumb grimacing expression of disappointment as his arm drops to the beach and then kind of collapses from the blood loss and shock and starts rolling gently towards the lake shore. Uh, dead, 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 dead. Lovely. You, you are now free, and you have a movement action. Oh, that's true. Okay, so who's in range? Just yeah, pretty much anyone's anyone. Anyone I care to engage? Yeah, there are two free individuals. One of whom looks quite grievously wounded, um, and there's Revelia, who is being flanked. Uh, Ooh, there's yes. the Malamai de Gesto thing. There's Anton, and there's obviously Cleaver. Yeah, against. I think Revelia probably needs some help actually. So step in there to to undo the flanking and to get an attack in on one of them. Yeah. Go for it. <clears throat> okay, that is a successful attack, and this time we're going to do 12 damage. <laughs> okay. That's past their pay threshold. Lovely. Oh. Let's go again. <laughs> that is a successful attack. 5 damage. <laughs> that is not enough to kill them. It's enough to make them want to die, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so this goblin with a spear, you just kind of like um, heft, absolutely heft into it and leave a great uh, rent in its side that is gushing blood. Some of its internal organs are kind of like poking through the rough leather it used to try uh, in the way of armor. It turns towards you and it seems to have, it must be adrenaline. Um, because the thing is just kind of like leaping towards you, jabbing with a spear. Um, you give another thrust and kind of like impale it through its chest and withdraw it. It is absolutely the walking dead. It is This goblin is coming towards you, bleeding all over, jabbing with a spear, desperately trying to take you down with it. Um, 
I mean, it's probably not going to succeed, let's face it. Uh, but, you know, who knows? Um, okay, Cleaver. Um, Cleaver is going to... Hmm. I think Cleaver is frustrated with the uh, glittering sparks. He's, you know, he's not smart, but he's smart enough to know when some kind of mystical power is being set against him. Uh, and he is going to wheel around and deal with the annoying armor-clad uh, asshole behind him before he uh, uh, can get an, a, a spear between the shoulder blades. So, uh, Steel, can you give me a defense roll at minus seven, please? Yeah, probably not. That's a perfect failure. I think I'm going to, I'm going to, I think that's an XP. I think that's given the roll, situation sure. with this gentleman, I'm going to spend sure. the XP on that. That's uh, still a fail, but a much more respectable. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a fair response, I think. Um, okay, can you give me an armor roll, please? Six. Six, okay. Um, he wheels around on you and you kind of try and hold him off with the spear. He doesn't care about the spear. He just literally shoulders it out of the way to step into you. Um, you feel his uh, fist impact into your um, your breastplate. You feel the punch dagger punch through the breastplate and plunge into uh, into your abdomen. Not too far, because obviously there's a gap between the breastplate and your actual body, uh, but enough that, oh, you've been wounded. Uh, that's six toughness, please. And then make me another defense roll. At minus seven. Woo! I'm very happy to see that. There we go. So that Probably is not for long. Right. Yeah, that's Diva, a... what a <laughs> attack this guy. Is that even a good idea? Well, you've got a free attack if you want it. It's... I He's not going to attack himself it. unless you got it. You got Aaron it, right? Him. That okay. is a success. That is a success. But as we know, um, success might not be a success. Uh, what's your? At least you've got a good strong, and that's what you need against this. So, what is your strong? My strong, if memory serves, is like thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, um so first thing that happens can you take three damage please take another three toughness um as essentially that punch dagger going through your breath with that going through your breastplate uh cleaver literally at first you think when you thrust back towards him at first you think that you uh thrust into his chest successfully and then you notice that his arm has clamped down on the end of your spear. He drops to one knee and using the punch dagger still lodged into you through your breastplate, heaves you over the top of his head to drop down, kind of like drop down onto the gravel and tumble um, through it uh, prone on the ground. Uh, yeah, Aaron Dar, he just bodily lifted Steo over the top of his head and basically just tossed him over his back onto the ground. Uh, Steo, take another three toughness. You are prone, and next round you cannot use any active actions. Got it. Does... Just one question. I think the three damage you did to me ignored armor. Is that the case? It does ignore armor, yes, absolutely. Can I it's, take a it's quick impact, test? Right? Can I take a quick test to negate that due to um, heavy armor mastery? mastery? Can you, could you read it out for me, please? This is man-at-arms mastery. Yes, man at arms mastery. Um, I rule against quick to negate things that are non magical that ignore armor. Yes, absolutely. Does, <sighs> quick. Also, does, does Cleaver's like, That's a success. wrestling? Hey, hey. Does Cleaver's wrestling riposte mean that he doesn't take damage despite Steo's successful attack? Correct. Oh. Okay. I think, like, lads, I cannot emphasize enough, stacking your two least effective hitters against this lad is not tactics. Ask or I. <laughs> I'm doing my best. People just keep trying to stab me for some reason. 
So basically what happens is, here's how it, if people are interested, here's how it is. Uh, adept level, um, the wrestler has to pass a normal defense test. And then if that is passed, they get to make the, the quick test to do the throw. At master level, they do the quick test first. And if it succeeds, no defense roll is needed. That's the thing of it. So, yeah. It's perfectly possible I am doing it wrong, but I'm just doing it as red. And hey, it's making for a fun fun mini-boss, right? Um, yeah, I Steel, think Mini's uh, doing you, a lot of work there. You don't know you don't know how, but somehow your like your instincts kick in, and when you hit the ground, you roll with it. Uh, so yeah, no extra toughness there, but um, still the other effects. Um, we're getting to our normal finishing time here. I think we can finish this with another round or two. So it's up to my players if they want to keep on playing or if they like desperately need to leave. Chris would normally be the one to say, I want to go to sleep. So um, is that okay with everyone else? We all good? Yep. We're all good. Yeah. Um, oh, and Sam in private chat, I feel bad for bringing this up, but does he get a free attack? He does get I do attack. feel bad, but I, you know, we got to play fair. Here we are. Uh, give me a defense roll at minus nine, please, Steo. Yeah, and an armor roll, please. That's a seven. Perfect. Um, as you kind of like roll roll over on the ground, you also that rolling means that the punch dagger that slams into the uh, the pebbles on the beach um, instead of you doesn't make contact with you. So the rolling was good all round, really. Um, there we go. That's Cleaver's turn. Uh, Revelia. <laughs> so um, between... is she going to try and finish off the the nearly dead goblin? Uh no, I think she's going to go for the less nearly dead one. Sure. I think the, the nearly dead one looks like a stiff breeze will take it down. So, mm -hmm. uh, right. So that is a, a hit, and she's doing d10 damage five. Well, uh, five damage. Uh, yeah, this goblin with a spear kind of backs off as, as what what is she wielding at the moment, by the way? She's, not she's um a sword and shield. Um she slices she does a decent slice on on the goblin's arm uh, with her sword. Nothing to, you know, mean that the battle is won, but certainly a a, a, a worthy blow. Um but remains sort of locked into combat with it. Um Farron. Time for another death roll, friends. Every day is a death roll in real life. That's a 19. <laughs> One more of those and it is over for our brave, bold feline. Aaron Dar. I... I am feeling good. I got one good hit on. I'm going to try and attack him. Okay. Uh, give me a um, regular old attack then, please, because no flanking happening now. Well, there wouldn't be anyway, because the other, the other goblin is still up, right? Oh, yeah. That's success. Okay. Uh, what is your strong? Did you say it's flat? Yes. Um, Stephen mentioning it raised a good point though. Here's the thing. If you do actually hit, does the hit still happen? Uh, to counter... Uh, just pass a normal defense test. Well, here's where the difficulty no, is. It says if the throw fails, then the defense test is rolled to avoid being hit. So that applies to me that if it isn't failed, then it isn't a hit. So, yeah, but here's the difficulty with an enemy having that, in that your defense roll is my attack roll. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. That normally you wouldn't do an extra defense roll. Yeah, I think I think basically we've just been doing it out of kilter in that like I you shouldn't even make your attack roll first. You should declare your attack, then I should roll his throw, and then only then should you bother rolling your attack. Yeah. Mm. If the throw he, do, he doesn't need you to hit to throw you, he just needs you coming at him. You know? Yeah, so you would resolve that first, and if he fails to throw you, then you get an attack. Then you get an attack, yeah. Um, either way, he did not fail. Um, oh. I just want to double check the rules on acrobatics. Okay. Whether it counts as attack or a like a blow. Sure. Yeah, because this isn't an attack. This is a reactive action. Yeah, it's a suffer a successful hit, so I don't think I can push the goblin. I, I, in I think that's an attack, and yeah. it also doesn't make sense. Like if he's grabbing to throw, why? Like if you somehow got the goblin in the way, he wouldn't throw him. He just, yeah, but, yeah, okay. no. Um, okay. Uh, unfortunately, that is um, three damage without armor. Uh, and you basically you're gonna like strike out from again and this time he you know you got through his guard before this time he has the measure of you in the way you thought you had the measure of him he reaches out and he actually grabs your um blade in one kind of leather gauntleted hand pulls you forward and then gets the the punch the punch gauntlet kind of around the underside of your jaw and just heaves you up and crashes you against the rock to your side, um, leaving you sprawling on the ground, uh, having taken three toughness again without factoring in armor. And then please roll a, uh, a defense minus nine because the goblin is up again. Yes. And I can't do acrobatics for this either because I'm prone. It is a pass, though, on the defense. There we go. Which means I can repost. Nope, he'll just throw me again. That's that's not risk it. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. Um. So, uh, with that in mind, there is one thing though. Uh, at least for Askarai. I don't think he even needs to worry about the 20s in this combat at the moment because everyone is down. Um, so that was Aaron. Uh, treasure Hunters. Okay. Um, well, there's one attacking you, Aaron. So make a, make a defense roll at minus three, please. Did you roll a 20? Roll the twenty. Yeah. I'm wondering. No. They don't do that much damage. I'm on two toughness. I'm gonna spend an experience. Okay. That's a pass. Okay. Uh which means you can repost. Yes. Which is a pass. And six damage. Six damage. Um, okay. You um, basically, this goblin kind of tries to finish you off with his axe while you're on the ground, uh, sort of strides forward. Uh, as the axe comes down, you uh, sort of grab the goblin by the wrist, pull and thrust at the same time, uh, spearing him through with your, with your dueling blade. Uh, the goblin's still alive, but he's kind of like reeling back, hacking and and clutching at his chest and like flailing at you again, like kind of walking, walking dead here, um, but still, still up. Um, so, <laughs> um, Elindra, that that heavily wounded goblin is coming for you. What will you do? Well, you'll make a defense roll at minus oh, one. Is what you'll do, but that's what I'll do. I yeah. will. Oh, I will fail that defense roll. Annoyingly. Well, you know the the adrenaline of the nearly dead. <clears throat> uh, give me an armor roll, please. Sure thing. Uh, six. Okay. Let's um, 
I should admit, all these treasure hunters have shields as well, by the way. I, didn't, I haven't really narrated that, but there we go. They've all got rough wooden shields, and it doesn't really matter. Um, sorry, what was your armor roll? Six. Six. That's absolutely fine. The, the short spear... This creature, like, the, the goblin has the adrenaline, but not the, the remaining strength to punch through your armor. Uh, can you give me a one for Revelia, please, at minus one? Yes. Um, yeah, that's a pass on the defense. <clears throat> okay. And uh, Chris, can I have one for Malamai, please? You can indeed. That is a success. Okay. Five. And I'm going to roll for DeGesto, who rolls that. It defenses that. That's a fail. I think I determined. Yeah, okay. Uh, again, DeGesto is struck, but doesn't really seem to feel it in any significant way. So that's fine. Um, can you roll a defense for Antom, please, Sam? Yes. That's a 10. Is it flat defense? Uh, no, it's a minus anyway. one. It's a minus it one. It, it definitely fails. It does have okay. good armor. Armor, please. Deep running. Which is nine. So. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Uh, again, the uh, the strike is deflected by the blessing of Prios, that um, blessed shield. Uh, there are two free treasure hunters. I think they've both been wounded by Steo. I think these are vicious bastards. I think they're just going to run, engage the general melee with Steo. And Aaron, and I think they're going to both strike at Steel on the ground. Well, I regret to inform you that my um, reactions are not active, so I can still take the reactions. Apparently, not prone. depending on how the and the, uh, I, yeah, okay. If the prone doesn't cover it, then the prone. I mean, it, I don't. I, I, it's an edge case, right? I don't think it's. Um, I don't think it's described in the book. But do we think that you should be able to? Do it while prone. Split the difference and give me one of them for the sake of, of sure. narration. Sure. Sure, absolutely. Why not? Take on one of them. Okay. That doesn't matter because I fail. Well, there we go. Uh, can you make two defense rolls, please, at minus three? That is one failure and one perfect success. Okay. <laughs> Good luck um, narrating this one. Just <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, let's take the uh, let's take the failure first, right? Uh, can you give me an armor roll? Uh, that is four. Okay. Um, the changeling with a sword. The sword crashes down on you, and you feel the tip of it uh, nick at your jaw and kind of trace uh, a red line in your beard uh, for one toughness. Um, and then the other goblin with a spear. Um, came at you like literally like spear rays to impale impale you onto the 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 beach um seems an ideal opportunity to thrust it with a spear so um go for it yeah oh miss ah, never mind uh, not good at fighting on the ground just deal no i mean people rarely are so you know that's fine uh, but it is your turn now so um I'll use my movement action to get up. And um, these are now engaged with me, aren't they? They are now engaged with you, yeah. Yeah, so all of my fun stuff is for naught. And what was the thing about, like, do you just. Like, it's really only on. It's when I get a reaction, and I don't get a reaction if I'm. No, 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 no. John, uh, what's the getting up thing again? It's more than just a movement action, isn't it? Uh, if you roll a quick. Uh, successful quick, then it only takes a movement action. Otherwise, it takes the entire turn. Unless okay. oh, you have okay. uh, acrobatics. acrobatics. I sit corrected, but maybe I will shortly stand up corrected if I pass this quick test. I pass the quick test! Hooray! I um, stand up corrected. Okay, so you are in combat with Cleaver. Um, one very grievously wounded goblin who uh, Aaron just stabbed. A changeling 
who's quite badly injured, and a goblin who's not very badly injured. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try and put the grievously wounded one out of their misery because I don't trust my damage. Sure, uh, that's just a regular old attack, then, please. Oh, that's a twenty. Oh my god. Um, I thought this combat was nearly over. Uh, so that is a um, yeah, they get an attack on you, so roll a defense at minus one, please. Um, or are they, is they, are they flanked? Oh, I can't be bothered to make it flanked. Go on. Uh, that is a success, unless I'm flanked, in which case I'm screwed. No, no, we'll, we'll make it a success. Like three on two is blurred lines, you know, I, I don't know. I um, think we've said it before that to flank they need double the amount of double the amount. Of, yeah, yeah. I think we've done that as well. Um, okay, so that re just results in nothing essentially. How to narrate this, indeed? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to bother. I'm too tired. Um, and Tom, and Tom getting another strike in. I th yeah, thing, he, he still has a guy fighting him. I, I yeah, think yeah, so. yeah. It's a flat gonna, attack. Going to do his best. That's a 19. No. Oh, it is an odd. So he gets to roll a d6, oh, yes, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, rolls a d6 for his uh, jointed flail. That is a three. I guess it is three damage. Okay. No, no damage. Yeah, it, it does just about. Um, kind of catches a light clunk on the back of the head with, with one of the. Uh, the weighted balls, so it's yeah, it's it's hit him a little bit, absolutely. Uh, Degesto, <laughs> time for Degesto's wild flailing to uh, see if it draws some kind of result. Um, it does, good lord. Um, so that is. Uh, a bit better. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be... Oh, God. Oh, God. Brain. Brain no longer works. Uh, yeah. Uh, Degesto, you see Degesto manage a solid thunk on the side of one of his opponents uh, with his uh, fire tube, and you hear a kind of, like, outrushing gust of breath from them as, as they double over from the blow. Um, I will ask my players again, do you do you want to try and finish this combat? I'm happy to, but you know, I don't have to be up in the morning. So, yep. Okay, we seem, we seem up for it. Um, Askarai, mate, you are finally free. <laughs> for the love of God, man, you're the this, only one with the DPS. I, I'm this not going to one-shot this guy. It's still going to be at least a couple of rounds, but I'm, I'm going to move to where I can and try my best to shoot Cleaver. I think with the, the, there's enough people in this comment. I'm still, like, it, it's definitely still a roll of 20 hit someone else, but it might not be one of your friends. It might be one of the other, like, opponents uh, engaged. So, um, I'm assuming you'll fire it. Like what, what? Well, what are you firing? Are you firing the armor piercing or definitely an armor piercing? I'm gonna move, probably we bob and weave a little bit through the combat that's going on everywhere, and just try and get a clear shot on Cleaver. Take my time and take an armor piercing shot, and pray to God that it does yeah. good damage. Uh, what is Cleaver's defense? A flat. Okay, need a sixteen or less. Pretty good odds. That's a one. Oh. <laughs> okay. um, and presumably you've got Hunter's Mark on him as well, though that's just to hit, right? It doesn't add damage, does it? You're on mute. I, I definitely would, would have Hunter's Mark on him. I deliberately didn't Hunter's Mark the last guy because I needed... So that's a plus one D6 on the damage roll. It's a D6... A D4 and a D10 plus one. Not the damage. Ignoring armor. Good chance. Of, <sighs> I will say that part of his armor is an armor, but yeah, because I cut. Yes. To be fair, I am going back. This this is something I changed my mind on quite recently, um, because when people's armor is listed, if they get like protection from other sources, 
it's like listed separately. Yeah. And at first I was like, oh, but if it's physical, it's still, I, you should still go through it in armor if it's physical and not mystical. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, then why would they even mark it out? Like, I think the intention is that it's, specifically this is robust, right? Which a lot of ogres and larger creatures have. And I think, because I was like, oh, it's just because they're bigger, so they're tougher. And that's like armor. And the more I've thought about, thought about it, the more I'm like, no, it, it's representing that they're just bigger. Yeah, I like, think that's fair. So I, I'm I'm going to say that robust still deflects where armor where armor piercing stuff doesn't, but still you, you're still going to do a lot of damage. Um, okay, probably unless you roll like four ones. Don't roll four ones. It's ten damage ignoring armor. Ten damage ignoring armor. Okay, um, so that is going to be that much. In actually, ele four. it's eleven. Eleven. Actually, it's twelve. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's 11 damage ignoring armor so with his robust yeah okay um, you fire arrow and it uh, basically jams through the back of his kind of huge thick neck so literally it's like behind uh, along the muscles of his shoulders there's just an arrow sticking there now uh, he doesn't seem to notice. But there is blood pouring down his back. It's definitely a horrible wound. He doesn't seem to care. Okay. If anything, he's enjoying the moment more. Um, <laughs> Malamai. Um, one of Malamai's opponents is, is quite wounded, I'm assuming. They're the one he's going to strike at, Chris. Yep. Okay. Uh, good luck. That's a 14, which is a flat and is a success. Nice. Um, so this is with the pommel. Uh, yes. Two damage with the pommel of the axe. Okay. That doesn't get past the armor, but it's damaged still. Uh, then roll accurate again on modified. That's a fail on the, uh, on the stun. So he isn't stunned and I don't get a second attack. Okay. Um, so that's unfortunately he strikes the guy, but he's wise to the tricks now, and he just kind of like takes a step back and and, and sort of steps into the steps back away from the blow, and doesn't really do much. Um, Elindra, yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm wondering whether it makes sense to have Elindra break out of this combat, right, and go and just try take and land three attacks. Yeah, let's take the three attacks and try and land something on. Cleaver. Maybe. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. Assuming he doesn't just fucking toss you. It, it, well, I mean... Yeah, I know, I know. You pays know. your money, you takes your chances, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, well, so, if you're doing that, you'll take two free attacks, but I, that's mean, I don't fine. think that particularly bothers you. I, I roll defense, though, right? Yes, yes, you do. Um, so give me uh, just two flat defense... Uh, two defense rolls at minus one, rather. Okay. They are both successful... After one successful defense per turn, pass a, a strong modified by opponent strong to push enemies out of melee and do 1d6 damage. I'm hoping that I can kill that really wounded one. That really wounded one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, what's the... Is it opposed strong, did you opposed say? Opposed strong, yeah. Uh, well, their strong is 15, so it's just, you're strong at minus 5. Okie dokie. That is a fail. That's a shame. Okay. Never mind. Not spending XP on uh, that. But, yeah, you, you feel both of their, like, <clears throat> blows... Like swing through the air behind you as you you dash away. Uh, well, you're going to get a long attack against Cleaver first, right? But let's do it in the right order now. Yeah. Before you attack, um, let's, let's see, see if, if Cleaver notices tossed. you and yeah, and, and flings you. Um, but you've got a good strong, right? So um, that yep. should help. What's your strong? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. He fails. Ha. Make your attack against him. Okie dokie. Uh, what's the... Um... Uh, it's flat. Flat. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a fail. I want to spend the next P on it, so I'm going to. Okay. Yes. Okay, success. Right. Okay. And damage. Damage. Uh, four. Is he flanked? No. He's not flanked. 14. 14. 
Yes. Uh, minus that amount, which takes us down here. Unfortunately, not past this pain threshold again. Um, That's a shame. Because uh, of course you're you're not armor piercing, are you? So no, no. So um, that was the that was the engaged attack, and then there's a actual attack. Yeah, you get another attack, but um, I was going to describe this first before he, because otherwise I've got to then describe him tossing you and stuff. You know, if that happens. Sure. So yeah, yeah, um, okay. Yeah, you charge over, and he's so kind of intent. Uh, he's been slamming his fist into the ground to try and kill Steel. He's got an arrow spinning out, and he's kind of like wheeled round, sort of one long arm, like swinging back towards. Uh, Aaron to kind of keep him on the ground and scrabbling backwards and he kind of fixes his eyes on Askarai and gives a sort of toothy grin um, and then you basically ram into his side with your sword and it just it literally impales him all the way through one side to the other and you kind of drag it back and gore and blood flows over you uh, like over your gauntlets and over the stones as you do so uh, and Cleaver kind of gives a kind of like pained grunt um, spins round at you, blinks heavily, and then goes. <laughs> right. Well, I guess we're dancing, right? Yep. Um, so before you strike, yep. Let's make that other test again, right? Uh, well, he's got the measure of you. Oh. Uh, as you you strike out with your sword, you, you feel like that's a kill. What you've just done is a killing blow. He just his brain hasn't caught up to it yet. Uh, and as you step forward to kind of like try and ball and cut through him it, with a surprising amount of agility for an individual who has things coming out of a gaping hole in the side of him that shouldn't be, uh, he drops down. It's exactly the same trick he he used. Um, on Steo, essentially, he drops down to one knee, uh, kind of tangles his arms up in your blade, and almost like falls backwards onto the ground in a roll, and just basically judo throws you off over the top of him. Um, immediately take three toughness through your armor, sure, uh, as you slam into the ground, and then he's also going to take a free attack against you. Uh, can you roll defense at a minus seven, please? Defense minus seven. <clears throat> so I'm going to need a six. That's a 16, so that's a fail. Okay, roll your armor, please. Sure, that's d8. That's a four. Okay, could be worse. Uh, basically, as you slam into the ground and all the wind rushes out of you, you don't, unfortunately, his fist isn't angled so that the dagger's there, but basically in the course of rolling back up to his feet, he just brings the flat of that gauntlet down, smack against the side of your head, a kind of stay down, uh, before he kind of rolls up to his feet and rams around to basically choose who he's going to plunge his, his punch daggers into on his next turn. Um, Speaking of his next turn, it's his next turn. Um, and again, I feel like it's whoever pissed him off last. And in this case, it's Alindra. Um, Alindra, can you give me a defense roll? Uh, oh, prone. I forgot that last turn. Didn't really work matter either way. Can you give me a defense roll at minus nine, please? Minus nine. So I need a four. I do not get a four. Uh, can you give me an armor roll, please? Yeah. No. Uh, ooh, I rolled a three. Okay. Uh, what's your pain threshold? Eight. Okay, well, he's over that. Um, so he's just dealt you nine toughness. Damn! Uh, and Damn. I'm going to say he's just basically punched down uh, and just the punch dagger's just gone right through your shoulder. Like, it's just pinned you to the ground. And as he pulls out, he kind of, like, drags it across uh, you can look down and see your collarbone poking out. Uh, it's pretty bad. Uh, could you give me a defense roll again at minus seven, please? At minus seven. Uh, so we're going to need a six. That's a fail. That's an XP, isn't it? Yeah, that's an XP. Burning uh, that XP tonight, folks. Yeah, well, I mean, another hit like that. Oh, it's I'm legit. I'm making death rolls, so um <laughs> I got a one. Wow. 
<laughs> Swingy tonight. There we go. Okay. Um, well, that's a free attack, right? That's a free attack. That's a free attack. Um, so, I think we've applied a kind of reverse thing when you're prone before. Um, so make an attack on him at plus two. Uh, minus two, sorry. Minus two. Okay. Oh, that's a fail. XP? Yeah, go on. Hang on, hang on. You're about to spend more than you're earning this session. Yeah, well... <laughs> I think he already has. Cleaver's worth it. Okay. So can he, like, do his throwing thing while you're already prone? Oh, yeah, I guess he, yeah, he <laughs> could do that, couldn't he? While you're already prone? I don't know. On a free I... attack to a natural one? That feels rude, but, like... It does feel rude. <laughs> but... He's, he's he's spent the XP to get master level something, hasn't he? So what's go that? ahead, go ahead with the attack. Yep. Nice. Uh, okay, the re-roll attack passes, so we're doing damage. Mm -hmm. Curtains for you, Cleaver. Thirteen. Right. Uh, he has you like impaled to the ground, basically, with this one punch dagger through your shoulder, right? And he basically pushes down as far how far as he can. You involuntarily howl in pain. Uh, and he kind of, with a sick grin on his face, kind of raises up slowly the other punch dagger to drive down into your face. And you cannot move. You can't move away from him. What you can do is double hand your blade. You bring it up swinging round, place your other hand halfway along. Uh, the blade of it, and as he comes down, you push up, and his weight and aggressive strike does the rest of the work as your blade pierces through his cheek, up through his skull, and out the back. Uh, there is a uh, horrible noise of gurgling breath and uh, a grunt of pain, and then you are still pinned to the ground as his corpse collapses on top of you. Um, you're in a lot of pain. It's uh, it's safe to say, and are, are crushed to the ground. The treasure hunters, as soon as they see Cleaver fall to the ground, give a kind of howl of despair. Several of them like kind of run off in each direction, just away as fast as they can, and a couple of them retreat to the um, to the boat that is pulled up on the lake shore where they evidently uh, climbed out to, to carry out their ambush of you. A uh, sloop with a tattered sail and a number of oars along the side. Um, recognisable as looking very similar to the profile of the ship that followed you out of Jakar. There we go. <laughs> a little bit over time, folks. Uh, but hopefully that was enjoyable. Ooh, that was that was a tasty little combat, wasn't it? Um, there we go. John? There is one thing that I can't leave until next time to resolve. Can someone get a Medicus roll off on Ferran before his next death roll? I am absolutely... Well, and Tom... Uh... I'm going to allow it because we drop out of initiative. I'm going to allow it. I don't think Steo can manage it, but I think Anton can. Um, but also, you don't need a, a Medicus roll, don't you? Just need a herbal cure. Yeah, that's true. Oh, do I have a herbal cure? Well, I do. Okay, I'm going to say you can you can scramble over and apply it. Nice. Okay. Well, we'll narrate that next time. But yes, Ferrin can be saved. Um, okay, folks. If you've got any comments or questions, we will run through them. It's already late, but we will run through them. Um, but thank you so much for, for joining us for this. Uh, down below, there's links. YouTube, Twitch, you know the business. Discord, Patreon, social media, etc. Uh, three weekly series at the moment. Monday, Vason. Wednesday, Simbaroon. Thursdays, alternating between Wicked Ones and uh, The Big Wet. We do monthly one-shots. I haven't had any for a couple of months. But uh, ooh, Hell Knight was like end of August, right? Um, but they will be returning soon. There we go. Okay. Comments and questions. Um, yeah, that was a big one. 
Cleaver's been cleaved. 42. He has indeed. He's fearsome, right? Um, I made some tweaks. I, I really need to explain my system for how I'm doing these tweaks, but not on this one. <laughs> We're already late enough. Um, Cle not too tweaked, though. Uh, in the end, I think it only... Uh, he had slightly improved defense and slightly improved armor. Um, and I think that was... Oh, and slightly improved toughness. But the ability, the wrestler, th that was all that block in the book. The master that's wrestler. That's mean. a nasty ability. With that much strength? Nasty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Stephen, all the Garou comes come out of the cave and applaud. And then everyone stood up and clapped. Um, yeah, absolutely. My cat is going. Can you hear my cat out there? No. no. Okay. I mean, He's done I the can. trick of leaving his tea and then meowing for more tea. Uh, Dungeoneering VTT, quite sure this is part of a personality test. Did that it? is the Garug. Um, oh. <laughs> rustling. The Garug rustling. Yeah. I, I guess at least we have a nearby boat if we're quick enough to stop them launching it. Then maybe you can put the Garug on that. It's quite a big boat. It looks like it probably has a, a, a below deck. Yeah. It's that Does big. it look like the eight of us would be able to row it, though? Well, there were 13. Yeah, it's, it's not like a huge boat. Oh. Um, it is sort of comparable in size. It's a bit smaller. This won't matter to most people. It's a bit smaller than the boat the pirates used in Fetters of Stone. So it's right. like, you know, it's a galley in the old, in the ancient sense. Like, it could probably fit maybe like 20 to 25 people on it at a push. Um, yeah. It's like many, a modern yacht, but it doesn't look like a modern yacht. How many like canoes it. strapped together? Uh, I can tell you how many tape ears it is strapped together. <laughs> um, don't kick food. Is it a big dog boat or a small dog boat? I'm sorry. My med Garu Cubs are like a medium dog comparison. is perfectly fine. I have made weird ass comparisons before. I will not move an inch on that. I think that's a good comparison. It's it's pretty good. It's just that I don't know what medium dog means because all medium dogs are dog. bigger. Most dogs are bigger than cats, and therefore they are big dogs. <laughs> okay. Apart from the dogs that are smaller than cats. What are they? They're small dogs because they're oh. smaller than a cat. Oh. It's humor. Never mind. Uh, Stephen, the party splitting went downhill faster than any I have ever encountered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Step the worst the yes, we'll go. <laughs> outside the cave, get a punch dagger in the side. Yeah, yeah. that'll do it. Uh, Steve, suddenly imagining Dark Souls multiplayer messages in Simbaru. Yeah. <laughs> that is. You usually get um, those going into the cave, not coming out, you know. Yeah. Maybe the good message for us to leave would have been definitely stab the toad. <laughs> stab, <laughs> the, <laughs> stab the toad. Stab the toad. Amazing toad ahead. <laughs> Uh, there was another one, but I've lost it. Yeah, that is the the brief overview of the comments that we got. Brief overview of the comments. Well, thank you very much for sticking with us for this. This might be, this is I think the longest Simbroom stream we've ever done. Probably, I know we had a long one when we finished off Wrath of the Warden, right? But like, um, yeah, this was, this was a long one. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Thank you for my wonderful players for sticking with me, and we will join you next week for the aftermath of this climactic and horrible and bloody combat. Um, until then, take care and stay safe, folks. We'll see you soon. Goodbye.